Fantastic. Thank you all for your patience at 620. Um, my name is Tammy Meltzer. I'm chair of Manhattan Community Board 1. Welcome. We did have uh, a little bit of um, challenges getting set up today, so I appreciate your patience. I appreciate everybody coming. We have full form in the room, so we're going to start the meeting. We're going to start the meeting with our uh, public session, as always, which will be comments by members of the public. It's one to two minutes per speaker, so two is your max. Um, and you will be timed apologies in advance if you are cut off. It is only because we are trying to be equitable for everyone who is coming. So with that form, let's go to anybody who would like to speak. Um, I'm going to call the order that I'm going to call some people in and then go from there. We're going to go Sean Conlin from Pace University. And Sean, I believe, is in the room. So we're going to start with you. Give me one second. And then afterwards, we're going to go to Jessica Davidson. Yeah, and yeah. after Jessica, we'll do Susan Lee. Welcome, Sean. Hi, everybody. Sean Coughlin. I'm the new Assistant Vice President for Public Affairs at Pace University which is a title that's far too long for me. I don't care for it, so please just call me Sean. But I'm here to answer any and all questions that the board may have regarding Pace University in the future. I'll do my best tonight if there are any questions, but I'll be honest, I'm still learning where the light switches in the bathrooms are. So I don't know everything quite yet, but I do have business cards hot off the presses that I can leave here for anyone who wants my email address or number. Or by all means, go through Lucian. Uh, I was at the district cabinet service meeting. Wonderful. You guys are in great hands. Uh, before Pace, I was the chief of staff and council member Eric Botcher on the west side of Manhattan. So there I had lots of interactions with community boards two, four, five, and seven. Not with one, though. So I'm very excited to get to know you all and work with you all. And thank you so much for having me this evening. Thanks for coming. Thanks for coming, Sean. Please definitely leave some stacks of business cards. That would be great. We'd love to have you in the office as well. So appreciate you coming. Thank you very much. Uh, next is Jessica Davidson. I believe she's online. We're going to be unmuting you in one second, Jessica. I see your hand. Okay, you can unmute now. I didn't expect to, I didn't expect to be speaking so early. Um, okay, wait, really... hold on a second. One second. Let's see. Jessica, can you try now? Yes. Hello. Can you hear me? Nope. Not yet. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. Now try. Okay. How about now? Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, I didn't expect to be speaking this early. Um, I just wanted to have an opportunity to respond if necessary about the hotel at 456 Greenwich Street. Um, I was at the licensing and permit committee um, meeting in May where um, we had come to an agreement um, a part of a community working group that met with representatives from the hotel and we hashed out uh, certain compromises as to the rooftop. Um, and, you know, I just wanted to make sure that whatever was presented um, at the meeting tonight was in accordance with what we had agreed to. Um, I reviewed the draft resolutions and it does seem to be in order. Um, like I said, um, I just want to have the opportunity if something else comes up to be able to raise my hand and and speak. Actually, your opportunity to speak is during the public hearing public session. So if there's specifics that you would like to say now is your opportunity because during the business session, only board members may participate. So please feel free with the remaining time you have to speak up now. Okay. Okay. So like I said that that we had agreed as what was in the resolutions in terms of the um hours and parameters for the rooftop. Um uh, still have some concern about what's um mentioned about these limited reward program that allows people who are not staying at the hotel to be um um, gain access to to the rooftop, but I mean there um, are 
um, supposedly control measures for monitoring the the people on the rooftop and um, we have yet to see how that will all pan out. This, I understand this is for a six month trial period to see how it affects the neighborhood and that it would be uh, sent back to the licensing and permit committee for review at that time, which I fully support. So as long as it adheres to the resolutions, the draft resolutions, um, I'm okay with this. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jessica, for participating and coming. The next person is Susan Lee online, and after Susan Lee will be Mariana James. <clears throat> We have good audio voices. Go ahead. Hello. Hi. Hi, Susan. Welcome. Hi. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Tammy, and all um, CB1 board members. Um, I am um, speaking about the safe haven at 105 Washington Street. Um, we had a meeting, um, the community board had a meeting, uh, I think it was last Thursday about 105 Washington Street. And I think um, a lot of questions were unanswered by the provider CUCS. And at the end of the meeting, um, the committee had said that they will continue further engagement with the community. And I want to just make sure that we do have this continued dialogue because I think it is really important um, to have this dialogue. When the safe haven was um, first brought to our attention in 2020, I think that the, the um, environment of our district um, of our community board has changed somewhat in the neighborhood downtown. And so I just want to encourage the community board to continue engaging with members of the community and specifically in terms of shaping the neighborhood advisory council to make sure that it is representative, uh, a representative of the community um, various stakeholders. So thank you so much for your time. And um, I look forward to continue engagement. Thank you very much for coming. Um, we're going to go to Mariana James and then to Bob Townley and then to Ursula Young. Thank you, Tammy. I wanted to bring the, I don't know why there's an echo. I only have on one device, so I don't, I apologize for the echo. Um, I wanted to bring the community's attention to the Port Authority board meeting tomorrow with regard to five World Trade Center. Their meeting is at 1030 a.m. at four World Trade Center. Sure. The last time I looked as of today, they still did not have five World Trade Center officially on their agenda. However, um, one of our local officials offices did call and follow up to the many calls um, that we had made when we were getting the runaround. And that official was told that five World Trade Center would indeed be added to the agenda of that meeting. Now, what's particularly problematic about that, in addition to the obvious, where the public has no idea, is that their website states that their policy is that the agenda for meetings will be posted on said website by noon on the Friday before the meeting. So obviously that has not occurred. I'm also concerned that the LMDC may be violating um, state open meeting laws because when we had, or when they had rather their presentation at the land use meeting, CB1 land use meeting last Monday, their representative stated that they still didn't know on what day their meeting was going to be held. Thursday, as I'm told, because I'm not a member of this body, but I'm told they notified the CAC, the Community Advisory Committee. And it wasn't made public, and with air quotes around the public, until Friday, May 19th, essentially giving less than a business day's notice. Because if you wanted to make a comment um, in writing, 
you had to do so by noon on Monday. And if you wanted the RSVP to appear in person, you had to do so by 2 p.m. on Monday. And the meeting was on Tuesday. So we rallied as many people as we could, but the public really wasn't notified in fairness. And their website also states, you know, things about public no hanging some uh, notice in the municipal building, all kinds of little stipulations that um, we read the other day. So I think that both agencies may be in violation of the meeting laws, although Port Authority tends to at least state on their website for several months out that they're going to have a meeting although they don't post the agenda. That's all, thank you. So 10.30 tomorrow, anybody that's able to make it, support a five World Trade Center, uh, increased affordability, if not 100%, at the uh, location is for World Trade. Thanks. Karen Alma, I think the most important thing we need to confirm is whether or not it's going to be on the agenda, because if it's still not listed, legally, they can't discuss it. It's against the law. I agree. But so, it was Charles Falls office that made the final call, a phone call to them, and it, it was confirmed to Charles Falls office that it will indeed be added to the agenda. But the last I checked this afternoon, it had not been still. Okay, well, then I definitely think our assembly member has some work ahead of us, and he can certainly uh, help us enforce the rules that we all have to follow. So thanks, Mariana. Um, Bob Townley is next, and after Bob Townley is personally young. Thanks, Tammy. I just want to follow up on something I started work on last month, which is a, a history of the district managers and the community board chairpersons. Uh, I feel it's very important, especially for the, many of you, to understand the history and the, and the leadership of this community over the last years. Um, and so I have had it, it, you would think it's simple, right? It's not so simple. I got ghosted from Madeline. I got ghosted from Julie. I got ghosted from uh, uh, Catherine Freed, but I'll get to them. They, I know where they live, but um, I'm, I'm hoping, I, I've printed out my research so far and I want to give it to Lucian. I want to give it to Tammy to see what we can come up with. There's, there's some spaces. Paul was very helpful to me, and Lucy was very helpful to me, but there's only so much that we know, and I'll hand this to Tammy, I'll hand this to Lucian, anyone else I made copies who may, yeah, I'll give it to Joe, and and then just email me, and, and then maybe at the end of this all, look, you see the conference room, uh, uh, Borough President Motley is here, at least something in the our community board office for the leadership of communities. It's very important. It's not where people need to know that someone like Tammy pulled during the pandemic, I don't know how many hairs she pulled out of her, but probably none, you still have very good hair. <laughs> but it's not, it's not easy. I've been around long enough, it's not easy. And there should be some uh, memorialization of that. So I don't wanna get on a soapbox. Um, if anyone wants a copy of this, if anyone, and then I start, while you're on break, I'll go into the borough of president's files here while no one's looking. But um, <laughs> don't, don't tell me. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, I, we, but but um, I have it here, and I'll give it to you, Lucia. I'll give it to Tammy, and I'll give it to Joe when I'm done. Thank you. And I'll. It, this may not get, get done till the holiday season, but with the, I'm thinking of maybe something in the office, or maybe even just I have good graphic designers. Maybe just a beautiful poster with Manhattan Youth on the front that people could distribute to to kids and to uh, other people, they need to know about community boards and they need to know about the work that we do. Okay, thank you very, very, very much. I appreciate that, Bob. Considering I'm on that list, I, I'm sort of on. You are there. And I, I am honored to be there. Thank you so much. All righty. Um, next, let's go to Ursula Jones. She's online. Crystal, I see you. So you're on mute. Hi. Um, thank you to CB1 for providing um, the session with CUCS about the new uh, safe haven opening at 105 Washington Street. I think uh, a lot of people from the neighborhood who were there appreciated very much having the opportunity um, to talk to them and clarify some of the questions we had. Um, 
And I really appreciate that they have agreed to uh, come back for another session because I think there was a lot of people who still had had questions. So thank you for being the liaison with them for that. Um, but I think um, I'm still concerned about some of the, the security questions. They spoke about their staff, which are inside the safe haven. And then there's NYPD, which is outside on the streets, but we all know that NYPD and highlighted from recent events even more um, is are not the best people to cope with um, or deal with either homelessness or um, mental health issues. Um, and allied uh, security is parks only. So my question is what happens in this kind of in between gray zone that we have. And um, I was wondering if when the BPC committee meets next to get the contract for allied renewed, if we can have conversations about expanding their role. And um, if uh, Pat Murphy's on the call, maybe he can answer it now. Tammy, maybe you have answers, but it's just a, you know, hopefully we can keep this an open dialogue to, to come up with, um, a shelter that we all are happy to have and support in our neighborhood. Thank you. No problem. We look forward to seeing you uh, at the next Battery Park City Committee meeting where you can certainly address your questions about allied to both the Battery Park City Authority, who's the contracting agency, as well as the representative who attends monthly. All righty. Thank you. Um, my pleasure. Um, with that, seeing no other um sign-ins and saying no hands up from the attendees in the attendee section elected officials oh you wait sorry okay i got gotcha. you no worries um we are actually going to open our public hearing we're going to close the public session at 6 37 open the public hearing which is the ideas for neighborhood support teams based on local law number 102 which requires the establishment of the local support teams and fees to address quality of life concerns throughout the five boroughs. Um, you can certainly advocate for issues that impact the neighborhood. The minimum requirement is a three block radius. We have a Google form that we have sent out as part of our newsletter and published to have information brought in. If you haven't seen it, please contact the office. Uh, the deadline for submissions is May 31st. Seeing no one who has signed up individually to speak, I will then now close. I have, Go ahead. I have a comment and I wanted to get feedback from the committee board because I don't know if it's an issue that's appropriate for this, but um, so my little pet peeve is cyclists. Um, I know it's probably not a major issue to most of these people, but for the 100th time this that year, I almost got run over by a cyclist as I was coming to the board board tonight. And you know, I think, you know, the other day I was actually crossing to Church Street and there was an NYPD officer, a traffic officer right there, traffic officer on top, and three bicyclists went through a red light. And I was just appalled. And, I, you know, it's dangerous. People can get injured and even killed. And, you know, I sort of sound like an old curmudgeonly person, but I actually really fear for my physical safety when I'm crossing streets these days. I see constant clouding of rules, of, of traffic rules. And maybe there's no clarity. Maybe they don't know if they're a pedestrian or a vehicle. You know, maybe there needs to be more clarity surrounding that. I'm pretty sure they're considered vehicles. Um, but you know, clearly something is going wrong um, when when this is the case. Um, and you know, it, it, it's I've crossed the street numerous times with my kids and have always been struck by bicyclists. And while we all advocate for cyclists in the city and think it's a great thing, I think there needs to be some sort of boundaries here. I mean, you know respect of the law here. And when you have NYPD officers just standing there, traffic officers, not telling cyclists not to go through red lights and they're going 30 miles an hour, we have a little bit of a problem. So I actually want to advocate for that to be part of the you know, ideas for neighborhood support teams. I don't know if the surrounding community board members agree with me, if this is an issue at all. Um, and they sort of want to take that. What? Elizabeth, we, all right, yeah. remember, we're going to keep it nice and organized. Right. I thank you for bringing it up. I really would like you to fill out the form. 
don't because think it's being addressed at all. That's it's not, I mean. but it's one of the things that yeah. affects multiple areas throughout community okay. Ford one. I got clipped by an electric bike on the sidewalk yesterday. So I definitely hear you. And I think a lot there there has to be like everything else we say in this community. We need balance. We need to protect bicyclists and the pedestrians. That the pedestrians have to be primarily our focus here, let's be honest, because they're the ones without the mobility running. And we can take that up in quality of life. Yeah, but please fill out the form and put it on because it is a definite thing that we would like. Joe, you're next. Can I get a copy of the form, please? Of the form? Absolutely. Where yeah. is the form? Yeah, where is the form? But it says there's a link on the newsletter. Oh, it's on the newsletter. It's on the newsletter. Uh, I'll forward the newsletter back to you, Joe. Okay. okay. Um, well, Any... I just wanted to say. Okay. Pat, I would, I... would you please talk to the first precinct? Community council meeting because it's it's tomorrow. Yeah, it's something that we've been bringing up over and over, and over again. Yeah, and I, I ask everyone to come because we've been bringing up the bicycle issue over and over again. We've talked about it, so you know, at What's the response from the police officers? They say they can't chase the bikes. They say that they they promised that they would do something. We have it's been three months since we asked that I haven't heard anything that they've done. Okay. Yeah. In committee. Do, yes. in committee. do you have something new you'd like to add in terms of local law 102, Francis? For the public hearing. We get here today at Brooklyn Bridge mm -hmm. where it comes down and all mm -hmm. everything meets together. So that's an accident definitely waiting to happen. It's a three block minimum. Please put your three blocks in and fill in the form. Right. I would be delighted to submit for it. Yeah, because there's no there's absolutely it is it's definitely anybody else hearing no others saying no other hands. Please. I, uh, yes. I was just going to say that when you bring it up in committee, to your point, Francis, this is a really beautiful one about the bridge. Um, the replacement of the bike lane with all the vending. It's a difficult balance to dance between the vending that's required for people's livelihood and the need to, of course, make announcements. So, I'm not sure how that balance gets. Played out entirely in committee, but I would say that both voices have to be heard, both from the pedestrian transportation and the vending side of the equation. Hey, Perfect. Fill you know that out in a lovely form for <laughs> our public hearing. Sure. Can I say more? Do you have something new for? No, I just want to say lo uh, for local law 102 for the public hearing. Well, I don't know. There was a lot of conversation. About oh, I'm trying to cut it through because this is a public hearing about local law. If we're talking about local law 102 and potential topics to put on there, absolutely. If it's something that needs to work in committee, please let's move on. I only wanted to speak just in, in defense nope. of cyclists. Nope. Uh, I'm a cyclist. No, 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 committee. Stop. 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 Is uh, there a due date for the form? May 31st, we have to submit, so we would like everything back by May 30th. So we submit to the board? You fill out the Google form, it automatically gets submitted. So we'll make sure that if you have if you have the newsletter from this weekend, it's in there. Betty and then Paul, and again, not topical. This is about, you know, ideas for neighborhood support teams. We've heard already about bicycles and enforcement and sidewalks. Betty? I submitted two forms already. Thank you. Yeah. One of them was about the excess number of city owned vehicles and pocket vehicle placards. The problem they caused was the best was kind of where they're parked to where they shouldn't be. The other one that I put in, we really need more public traffic. Yes. Yes. Thank you very much, Betty. Jason, did you have your hand up? No. Perfect. <laughs> okay. See. <laughs> Seeing no other hands. We are officially closing the public hearing at 6 and 44. And we move on to uh, the business session. So, as is our norm, we vote on the adoption of the 2023 minutes and then we do our updates from electives. Because we are so graciously sitting in the borough president's office and the borough president actually did come by to say hello to everybody before he got dragged out to go to five other events tonight. We're going to actually let um, Keisha Sutton, 
uh, go first because I understand she also has to go. And then assembly member Grace Lee is here. And then we will work through all of our electives in order after that. So first, let's go through the adoption of the 2023 minutes. That's it. Yes. Roll call. Ready? Adam Russo. Blank. Blank, yes. Brown County. Brown Kennedy, yes. Cameron. Cameron, yes. So, Roxy, you can just see your name. Okay, here. Star. Yes. Jimmy's son. Here's son. Thompson. Yes. Townley. Yes. You. Yes. Delter. Uh, yeah, police officer. Rosa. <laughs> voting voting on the minutes from last one. Yes. Let's go back real quick. Four. Two. Herman. Forsberg. Roman. James. She was online, so I changed the one name. Two. That's the sound she had. Did you get Zelter's yes? I did not hear you, no. Uh, hang on. Capel. Lynn. Achoo. <coughs> Robinson. Zelter. Zelter said yes. He was Zelter. Okay. Passes 34000. Okay. I don't know if you called my name, but I can't hear most of the names that you called. Ushma Pandya? But I wasn't yeah. here at the last meeting, so I have to stay. Yeah, what's your vote? She abstained. She wasn't here for the last meeting. Okay. She can't vote though, right? She can't vote. Yeah, she's approved. She's approved. She's approved. She's approved. Oh. Okay. Yeah. And sorry, did you get Zelter's yes? Yep, yes. I did. But you can't vote. Okay. Great. All right. Yeah, we'll get there. All righty. So now we've got uh, updates from our elected officials, and we have assembly member Grinsley with us remotely. So let's go to assembly member Grace Lee first. Thank you so much for coming. Hi everyone. It's really great to see all of you. I can't wait for session to be over so I can join you in person, but thanks for having me remotely. Um, I just wanted to give a quick update. We are coming to the close of the legislative session, uh, but I wasn't able to um, come by uh, right after the budget. So I just wanted to share a couple of things that happened. Uh, during uh, this year's New York State budget. Um, a few things that I uh, was uh, primarily responsible and leading on uh, during the budget process was um, funding for our Asian American communities, which of course uh, impacts uh, part of our community board one area. 
uh, with Chinatown. And um, we were successfully able to get $30 million put in the budget to support Asian American community-based organizations, which is a historic win uh, for the community. This is the largest amount of money ever dedicated by the state to the Asian American community. And really proud uh, of the work that I was able to do with a group of legislators to get that done. Uh, the other thing that I worked on was uh, the uh, emergency rental assistance program, getting that funded for uh, NYCHA residents and Section 8 residents who were deprioritized and essentially taken out, eliminated from the program because there wasn't enough assistance for them. So we worked to get $400 million in the budget to support public housing and subsidized housing residents across New York State to help uh, wipe rent arrears for those who experience um, financial hardships during COVID. So this is a huge win for us. I'm sure you've read all the headlines about all the housing uh, policies that did not make it into the budget. This was one of the very few things that did uh, make it through. So I'm really, um, really happy about our ability to get it done. Um, on housing, um, I know that many of you uh, had a lot of opinions about uh, the proposal to lift the FAR cap. Um, I was I led a press conference with Deborah Glick uh, in opposition to lifting the FAR cap, which would have was proposed by the governor mainly because it did not have any types of assurances for affordability uh, within that policy. And so uh, myself and Deborah Glick. Um, introduced legislation uh, in response to that uh, to allow um, uh, kind of um, office conversions, which would need kind of an allowance of an increase in FAR cap to be able to go through if it included uh, affordability measures in with the development as well as labor standards. So um, that was, but you know, fortunately, the policy that the governor introduced, which was just to lift the FAR cap across New York City, which would have completely uh, changed how things looked down in lower Manhattan, did not go through. And I think a lot of our advocacy uh, was part of the reason that didn't happen. Um, another, a lot of other good things uh, happened in our budget this year. We had, uh, we increased uh, funding for education by $3 billion. This is the first year that foundation aid was fully funded in the budget. We also uh, provided funding for universal free lunches for children um, and uh, a very popular policy. We uh, put money in the budget for free buses. So there'll be one free bus um, per uh, borough that will be, um, that will be uh, kind of going through and the MTA will be deciding which bus line will be free, but would love community boards uh, once input on which line you think that should be. Um, in addition, uh, because of the funding we put into MTA, we did were able to limit fare hikes as well as increase bus service for nights and weekends. Um, so those are some of the highlights I think that people care about in Community Board One about um, within the budget. Happy to talk on other things. Um, oh, one other thing is we also um, tied minimum wage to inflation. So that's uh, a big win for um, working people across New York State. Uh, some of the legislation that I'm working on um, heading into the close of session, uh, I recently introduced a bill with Senator John Liu to um, include Asian American history in New York State public school history curriculum. So that's something that we're really trying to push this year. Um, in addition, we have, I have two bills that made it through committee this week, which I'm really excited about. One of them was um, uh, to call for a study of synthetic turf using crumb rubber. I don't know how many of you are familiar with, um, you know, the components of rubber tires that are used in synthetic turf and they're used all across New York City, but uh, they contain heavy metals and other really dangerous chemicals. So we're calling on the DEC to do a full study of the, and the DEC and the DOH to do a full study. Um, along with the study, uh, this bill would also put a moratorium on any installation of synthetic turf in disadvantaged communities. So it wouldn't likely have much of an impact in uh, parts, you know, on the west side 
of Lower Manhattan, but would certainly be impactful to uh, the east side of Lower Manhattan, which is more of CB3, but something that you know is we should all be looking out for. Um, so that moratorium would continue until the study was done and there was some assessment of health and environmental impact of crumb rubber synthetic turf. Um, and then I have another bill with Senator Brad Hoyleman uh, to ban the sale of sodium nitrate for anyone uh, under 21 years old. Uh, sodium nitrate is a really easy to purchase item on Amazon. You can buy it for $15. And unfortunately and sadly, uh, many teenagers have been purchasing sodium nitrate in order to commit suicide. So uh, we are um, trying to ban that and make sure that it doesn't get into the hands of people who um, would pose harm to themselves. So those are some of the big things. And obviously, if anyone has any questions, we'd be happy to answer them as well. Any board members have any questions? Eric? Yeah, hi. You said the minimum wage would be tied to inflation. Is, is that just proposed or is, is that passed? Twenty twenty six, it's going to rise to seventeen dollars an hour, and then be tied to inflation. Yep. So um, it's going by twenty twenty six. The minimum wage is going to raise to seventeen dollars per hour, and then thereafter will be tied to inflation. So it, that has passed through the budget. Oh, I, I'm just concerned it will make New York State more expensive to hire people. But okay, thank you. Okay, uh, Cody. Uh, just a quick update. If, uh, I'm just not sure I'm up to date on on Sammy's law, uh, the law that would have um, allow for New York City to set speed limits lower than 25 miles per hour. Can you give me any update on that, or where it stands, and what why it hasn't moved forward? Yeah, so I'm proud to lead on a letter um, to try and get it. There was a last minute push to get it into the budget. Um, it's it was a big tug of war of like what policy was going to get into the budget and what was going to be left out. Unfortunately, it didn't make it into the final budget proposal, but advocates have been around. Um, it's still something that we would, we are looking to try and pass and, you know, I will be supporting it as well. Great. Great. Any other questions for Assembly Member Lee? Seeing none, thank you very much for the time and for coming with us. So we look forward to seeing you in person. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Um, next, we're going to go to Keisha Sutton James because she was so gracious as being part of our host here um, at the borough president's office. And I did promise the borough president that she could go early simply because he said he couldn't stay. So <laughs> we'll honor his uh, his request there. And then after Keisha is Emily Lang, who is doing multiple community boards tonight, and then Tevin Williams from Congressman uh, Goldman's office. And then I keep going. I have eight total. Don't worry. Me. Keisha, welcome. Thank you. I will be uh, quick uh, and brief because I also am doing a couple of uh, community boards uh, tonight. Thank you, Tammy, for, for squeezing me in early. Uh, I want to start off, of course, by thanking uh, our former community board members for uh, for their service and also obviously to congratulate the returning community board members. Um, and uh, I apologize. Oh, sorry. Wanted to make sure all of a sudden I felt like I was I had the wrong names in front of me. Uh, so many, so many changes uh, happening across the borough. I uh, wanted to give a warm welcome to Manhattan uh, Community Board 1 members, uh, Netta Porshakuri. I hope I did not uh, butcher your name. Hopefully, give me some time. I'll get it right. Uh, Gabriella Rossi, Jared Shear, Brendan Thompson, and Joel uh, Grayson. Uh, we're all looking forward to your, your contributions on, on CB1 going forward. Uh, we we shared condolences on uh, on borough board, but I wanted to make sure also to uh, share our condolence our office's condolences uh, regarding the recent passing of long term uh, board member and you know awesome community uh, excuse me community contributor uh, of Manhattan Island wide uh, Bob Schneck. Uh, I know that uh, this loss is weighing heavily on CB1, and I just wanted to make sure to share uh, our condolences uh, with CB1. Um, I wanted shifting gears, wanted to thank all of you who are able to 
attend our joint AAPI Heritage Month celebration uh, with Assembly Member uh, Grace Lee, who you just heard from. It was last uh, last week at the Manny Cantor Center. It was fantastic. Uh, we had awesome uh, honorees, uh, great speeches, and most importantly, really good food. Um, <laughs> um, uh, and, and frankly, uh, you know, we had honorees and, and attendees that came from all over the island. So we're really proud of that. I'm really sorry. I'm a little bit sick. Um, sorry, I've got to mute. I think I'm going to sneeze. Sorry. Um, I think it went away. <laughs> um, million more trees, uh, as, as many of you know, but it to serve as a reminder. Uh, during the, the April 2023 Manhattan Borough Board, a unanimous resolution was passed by a Manhattan community boards, our council members, and of course, the borough president uh, in favor of planting a million more trees by the year 2030. Um, and of course, as part of Arbor Day last month, MBPO, the Manhattan Borough President's Office, also launched a competition where individuals can nominate their favorite tree in Manhattan by taking a photo. I'll drop that link. Um, into the chat, uh, just so you can uh, participate as well. Um, very importantly, um, two important, uh, you know, um, stakes uh, in the ground. Uh, Borough President Levine has been advocating against the the Rent Guidelines Board proposed uh, rent hikes uh, earlier this month. MVP uh, Borough President Mark Levine stood uh, in strong opposition opposition to the Rent um, Guidelines Board preliminary vote that would advance a range of proposed rent hikes on rent stabilized apartments in New York City. If passed, the final vote scheduled for 20 for June 22nd, 2023. Um, these potential adjustments could um, increase rent 2 to 5% for one year leases and 4 to 7% for two year leases. Um, we believe that our city and if not, we believe it is a fact that our city is still entrenched in a housing crisis that has seen a median uh, rent as high as $5,000 in Manhattan um, and many rent stabilized tenants are still feeling the impact of uh, the board's rent increases from just a year ago. Um, so we believe that is not uh, the time for more rent increases that will put further burden on the backs of the nearly 2 million vulnerable New Yorkers. Uh, it's time for the opposite, a total rent freeze for rent stabilized units. Um, so Borough President Levine is com committed to continuing the fight as the rent guidelines board moves to its final uh, vote and strongly urges the board to reject any proposed increases that add fi financial stress to the lives of struggling New Yorkers. And then secondly, as I said, um, a second important development that just happened yesterday um, uh, Borough President Levine's uh, recommendation regarding uh, Madison, Madison Square Garden special permit application was released. Um, while, of course, uh, it's not in Manhattan Community Board uh, District 1, MSG is frequented by many New Yorkers and tourists alike. Overall, um, the MBPO recommendation asks for a five year term limit on, uh, on the special permit. And also looks for MSG to work with the railroads, uh, New York City Department of Transpor Transportation and Community Board 5 to create a plan that repurposes the theater, um, which is, I think now the Hulu theater into a, um, into a new station entrance, um, but also to create more efficient loading in the taxiway in the mid block and add new station entrances, entrances there and also to. Um, enhance the public spaces around the arena. We'll also get the um, the full uh, the full plan to you as well, um, because there's a it was it was a several page plan. So I want to make sure that you have all of that as well. And that is uh, that concludes my report. Unless there are any questions. Nope, I think we are good. I see no hands in the room on the report. And if you have it electronically, please feel free to send it to us. We'll be happy to share it out. So that's awesome. Thank you very, very much. I know Emily Lang is next and chopping a bit. She's got to run to another community board. We can't keep her all to ourselves. Emily, you're next. Thanks, Tammy. Um, hi, everyone. Good to see you all. I want to start by also passing along my condolences and the senator's condolences about the passing of Bob Schneck. He was so very warm and kind every time I spoke to him and it, it really is very sad news. Um, so, starting with some legislative updates, uh, I don't want to repeat everything that Grace said about the state budget, but I'll just highlight a couple things that um, she didn't mention. 
Um, on the housing side, the budget, uh, in addition to the money for ERAP that Senator Kavanaugh fought very hard for as well, it also includes $40 million for the Homeowner Protection Program and $50 million in new funding for legal representation for tenants facing eviction. Another big thing in the budget we were really excited about was the All Electric Buildings Act. This is legislation that Senator Kavanaugh authored and has been pushing for for a couple of years now. It would basically ban gas hookups in new construction with certain exceptions starting in 2026. Um, another development in the budget that's relevant locally is implementation of new enforcement powers on illegal cannabis stores for the Office of Cannabis Management and the State Department of Tax and Finance. Finance. Um, just quickly, the rules basically give OCM the authority to inspect any business involved in the adult use cannabis trade, seize products and impose penalties, and take businesses to court to force them to close down. It also allow, allows uh, tax and finance to conduct administrative searches of bus businesses with adult use cannabis, also seize products, revoke business registrations, and impose penalties. Other than uh, that, uh, the free bus pilot program that was already mentioned. $30 million for the AAPI equity budget, minimum wage increases, additional capital funding for SUNY and CUNY schools, and no tuition hikes for in-state students, and the Build Public Renewables Act, which will basically require the New York Power Authority to generate all of its electricity from clean energy by 2030 and empower it to build and own renewable energy infrastructure. Outside of the budget, we're getting close to the end of the legislative session, working to do as much as we can before session ends. We have a number of bills on the floor right now, including our Fair Courts for Immigrant New Yorkers bill, a voter registration bill, a battery recycling bill, and a bill to address some of the gaps in the 2019 HSTPA, um, such as Frankensteining. We're also working on pushing a package of deed theft related bills that we announced with Senator Myrie and Attorney General James earlier this month. And finally, on legislation, we have reintroduced and are working to advance our Battery Park City ground rent freeze bill for homeowners and renters, which we introduced last year, but did, did not move. Um, Assembly Member Fall has agreed to pick that up in the Assembly, and we hope to be able to pass it this year. That's bill number S2963A for anyone who's interested. Uh, moving on to community updates, uh, I want to start by saying how excited we are for the reopening of the Brooklyn Banks tomorrow. We are really proud to have supported this from the beginning and to have been part of the advocacy to push DOT in the city to make this happen. I want to congratulate everyone who's worked on that, especially Rosa Chang, who I think is in person in the room somewhere over there. Um, so, as many of you guys know, earlier this month, the state agencies announced that they were moving forward on public approvals for Five World Trade Center against the opposition of all of the local elected officials, Community Board 1, and community advocates. In response to this, we spearheaded a press conference, press release, and a joint letter with our elected colleagues to push back and demand that the agencies pause and continue working with us to secure the funding we need to increase affordability. We've attended and spoken at the two board votes that have already taken place and plan to continue that. Um, just, I think a quick correction, the Port Authority board vote is this Thursday at 11.30 a.m., not tomorrow, I think. Um, and we'll continue working uh, to get the agencies to pause and do everything that we can to find the funding that we need. Another big issue we've been working on with the community board and our colleagues is the Borough Base Jail. A few weeks ago, um, we received additional documentation and responses from the city following up from our meeting about a month ago that we shared with the board and the community. And we'll continue to facilitate that communication between the city and the community to make sure we're getting you know, all the documents we need and all the questions answered. Um, on screen three issues, we are continuing to work with Councilmember Marte and Assemblymember Glick's offices to get the local implementing legislation for our bill that expands eligibility to former Mitchell Lamas and Battery Park City residents. We'll keep the board updated as that continues, but it is chugging along slowly. Um, and finally, a uh, bit outside CB1, but we're hosting a screen three sign up clinic at Knickerbocker Village in the Lower East Side next month. Um, we hope to do more of these if this one goes well, uh, especially at former Mitchell Lama buildings and in Battery Park City as well once those bills get implemented. And I will stop there and happy to take any questions. Anybody have any questions for Senator Kavanaugh's team? Uh, Rose Chang. I don't have a question. I just want to say thank you guys so much for your support. It has been so, so meaningful to us and bottom of our hearts. Thank you. We wish that thank you. Awesome. I know he's really sad he can't be there, but I'll be there. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you.
Well, thank you very much, Emily. Um, I have really my hand up. I don't know if you can hear me. Oh, Bruce, I apologize. I did not see your hand up. Go ahead, Bruce. Okay. I, I, could you could you just give us a brief sort of straight ahead um, sober analysis of where we're at, where you think we're at regarding the uh, the, the the community based jail, at least in Manhattan? Where do things really stand? Would you say? So, you know, the community and the board has been working on this issue for many, many years, and um, back in. March 2nd, I believe was the date. Um, we convened sort of a large meeting with all of the elected officials, the community board, um, representatives from Neighbors United Below Canal, along with the commissioner of DDC and uh, representatives from City Hall and DOC to discuss this idea of adaptive reuse, which is, you know, as you know, something the community has been advocating for for a long time. I think there was just a lot of uh, large lack of transparency, not a lot of clarity on whether the city had actually studied this plan or not. Um, if there was documentation they could provide to, sh to show that they had looked at it, assurances that they could make to the community. So that's basically what we were asking for. Um, along with that, a pause on any work on the site that would be inconsistent with adaptive reuse. We were able to get that pause and since then have sort of been pushing the city, working with the city. We've had follow up meetings, one follow up meeting. Um, to get all that documentation. So we're just sort of going back and forth right now. Um, once we get, you know, what, when we get documents, we sort of discuss and review amongst ourselves, um, sort of figure out whether or not we think they're acceptable, if, you know, they're giving us everything we've asked for, and then sort of going back and continuing that conversation. So that's sort of where we're at, and the pause is continuing as that works. The further demolition at this moment has been halted, further demolition. Demolition that's inconsistent with adaptive reuse. So, you know, they're demolishing like the jail inside one of the towers right now, which, you know, is fine because that, that wouldn't be inconsistent with adaptive reuse. So there's still work going on. It's just nothing that would prevent adaptive reuse from being um, implemented. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Thank you very much, Bruce. Not seeing any other hands online and no hands in the room. I will thank you very, very much, Emily. And we'll move on to Tevin Williams from Congressman Goldman's office. Tevin. After Tevin, we're going to go to Roy Ramiz from Assemblymember Glicks, and then Robin Force from the Mayor's office, and then Henry from Councilmember Marquez and Lupe from the Public Advocate. And just as a reminder, everyone has four minutes or less. Thanks, Tevin. Yeah, no problem. Thank you, everyone. Uh, good to see everyone on CB2 tonight. Tevin Williams with Congressman Goldman's office. Um, just a quick couple updates. I try to be very, very brief um, with my updates and making sure that we're there. I want to first off wish everyone a happy AANHPI month, Asian American, Native Hawaiian, and Pacific Islander month. Um, as you know, Congressman Goldman is an executive board member of the Congressional Asian Pacific American Caucus, and we're eager to celebrate the achievements of the AANPH. I community. Um, the biggest thing I would like to highlight is everyone is obviously known about the migrant increase in the city. Um, we just wrote a letter to see if all of our universities within the district uh, to the chancellor of SUNY and then also of CUNY as well. Uh, and all of the presidents of the universities, especially uh, NYU to see if they can look into housing the migrants that are coming in. Uh, we know that the city is being impacted all over in our district and in general of an increase of migrants, and we're looking to see any available options for that. We joined that letter with Congressman uh, Jamal Bowman up just a little bit outside of the city. And then the biggest thing I wanted to say next after that um, is we obviously have been fighting um, for a new creation of a federal agency to address gun violence. Uh, we joined a letter with Congressman Max Frost of Florida, Florida 10, uh, to see if we can create an Office of Gun Violence Prevention. Everyone knows that we are in a huge, uh, just tragic spike in school shootings, and this would just be super helpful across the nation in introducing this legislation. Um, outside of that, as I've mentioned before, we've been helping a lot of constituents with passports. If anyone needs help with their passport, please reach out to our office. Our website has our contact information and you can fill out a privacy release form. We know it's summertime, everyone's traveling across the country and the world. Um, please reach out to us if you have any questions. And as always, it's good to be here. Thank you, everyone. Very much. Do I have any questions in the room? Or Congressman Alex Blank. Kevin, hi. Hi, Alex. 
I just wanted to um, underline the need for your office to help us with continue to help us with the setting up the funding and the formation of the West Side Resiliency Task Force. That's yes. something we vote on tonight, and I assume it will pass. So we really need the next step on that. So we're looking forward to your support and guidance. Yeah, we mentioned it to the congressman when he was last in district. Uh, it's just a piece of like coordinating with a couple other movements on that. But I'm glad to hear that y'all have taken it up as well. Um, we're trying to figure out logistically what the best option for that is, but it's definitely on his radar. We have not forgotten about you. Seeing no other hands in the room, seeing just double checking, seeing none online. I want to thank you very much, Tevin, for coming. Thanks for always attending Community Board 1, and we will see you soon. Thank you all. Have a great night. Welcome. Hi, guys. Can you hear me? Yes. Hello? Okay, okay, perfect. I hear you now. Uh, thank you. Uh, so, okay. Um, I'm thankful that um, Emily is speaking for me because she made my list a lot shorter. <laughs> uh, so, I will be attaching a link to the chat that leads to our report. And in it, you will find a list of a lot of the things that were funded through this year's budget, um, categorized by environmental um, initiatives and policy, uh, financial relief, health and human services, so on and so on. Um, two things that the assembly woman is um, proud to have passed is the Birds and Bees Act, which would prohibit the sale and distribution of corn, soybean, and wheat seeds that are coated with neonicotinoid insecticides. That's a kind of a mouthful there. Uh, and also her bill that would prohibit uh, lead ammunition uh, when hunting on state land and land that contributes uh, surface water to the New York City water supply, and I'm sorry for the sirens. Essential um, workers, we're good. Keep going. <laughs> yeah. um, we also submitted a letter to the Lower Manhattan Development Corporation. I did attend the meeting that the community board had earlier this month and um, brought those concerns to. Um, the assembly member and and you know um, despite the fact that it's outside of our district she is uh, very concerned about it and cares about that issue very deeply so we did write um, to them for their public hearing that took place I think on the 16th um, so if any updates about that like the one tonight regarding the Port Authority do come up please don't hesitate to reach out to me uh, it's a topic that we're really, that we're following closely. Um, our composting event um, went really well last week, and uh, we got to um, collaborate with sanitation uh, sanitation's community affairs person uh, Marissa, who was wonderful and gave us even myself a lot of information about what composting is and. Um, how it's going to be used in the process of it. And um, I believe that October of next year is when it's coming to Manhattan. Curbside pickup is coming to Manhattan. So that's going to be exciting. Um, I am in the process of planning two events. One of them will be at Independent Plaza uh, Senior Center. It's These events are going to be about Omni and the MTA is going to, we're going to collaborate with the MTA to bring uh, a presentation and education on the Omni system and how to link um, uh, reduced fare metro card uh, benefits to the Omni system, which is something that um, a lot of people uh, are concerned about and have questions about. So we're going to be there to answer them, uh, and Deborah Cliff will be there, and I will be there, and it's going to be really exciting. So stay tuned for that. I will share a flyer as soon as I have one and the details hashed out with uh, with uh, the MTA. And also um, we're planning a shred event for later in the year. We 
are just in the early stages of that. So stay tuned for that too, because that's going to be fun. Those are fun. Um, that's it for me. Thank you. Okay. Steve. Roy, we've got one hand in the room. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, well, yes. Thank you, Mr. Roy, Mr. Ruiz. I wanted to ask you about um, composting because uh, now that we're moving towards curbside composting for um, you know buildings that are uh, on a smaller scale uh, for composting, I wanted to ask um, what uh, reasoning might be behind the fact that my school uh, does not have curbside composting despite our efforts to contact uh, the Department of Sanitation. Um, on, on the Sanitation website, it says that uh, all public schools are available for this, including some private schools and charter schools in New York City. Um, so I'm wondering um, how I could get my school and with others, of course, um, to be part of this curbside composting program, given that now we're moving towards residential buildings, which is a much smaller scale. That's a great question. I think, yeah, I would be happy to help you with that. Uh, if you could email me, I could um, get in touch with the community, uh, with the council members as well, because this also is a city thing and Department of Sanitation is a th city thing. So I'm happy to help connect you, your school to whatever agency is supposed to be doing composting or helping, you know, facilitate the composting at your school so that that can happen um if 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 what you say is correct so uh, i'm happy to help you and i will leave my uh information as well in the chat um hopefully they can share it with you and yeah just reach out to me and we can hopefully get that going awesome great i see one more hand in the room mariama i just wanted to thank the assemblywoman for her really amazing letter that she wrote on behalf of Five World Trade Center for the LMDC hearing and to suggest that anybody that's interested that ever had any question as to why you know it should be built or had some idea that it should with the 40 with the 100 percent affordability or had some thought that it shouldn't be or couldn't be if you ever had any questions about it at all read Deborah Glick's letter because she answers every single thing it is amazing um, when you go to the, the link with the hearing with a PDF opens and you have to scroll down to like page 150, but there her letters there and it's 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 incredible. Oh, thank you, thank you Thanks. so much. I will communicate that as well. Anybody else? Any other hands for Roy? Roy, thank you so much for coming. Thank you for being here, and thanks to Assembly Member Glick for her testimony. Um, perhaps she can do it again tomorrow for LMDC and push with there. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm sorry, tomorrow's Port Authority. Thursday, Port Authority. Yeah, Port Authority. Oh, goodness gracious. Okay. Um, next, let's move on to Robin Forrest from the Mayor's Office. Hello. 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 Um, first of all, I wanted to. Hello, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear yes. you. Yes. Okay, I just got a message that I was removed from the meeting. So one uh, anyway, <laughs> one of us. Okay, great. Uh, my uh, split personality, I guess. Uh, I will be brief. I know you have a big agenda and you got off to a late start. So um the big news which many of you are aware of and uh was already mentioned 
is that tomorrow is a ribbon cutting for um, in commemoration of both the 140th anniversary of the Brooklyn Bridge and also the creation of new public space um, uh, called the Arches. Uh, Rosa Chang was thanked, and I don't know Rosa really, but you know, wonderful work also uh, supporting this. And we're very excited to um, welcome anybody on the board who would like to be there. It's uh, always wonderful to see new space and the use of old space and the return as the Brooklyn Bridge project started in 2010. So it has been a long time. And if anybody is interested, the ribbon cutting is at 11 o'clock tomorrow. And the location is Frankfurt Street and Rose Street near the Avenue of the uh, Bravest. So I hope you will join us if you're able to. It's supposed to be a nice day. There was also reference made earlier to the surge in asylum seekers, and it's a huge strain on New York City's um, budget and life. Um, the mayor continues to press for support from both the state and the federal government, and I hope we will see some of that funding soon. Um, other than that, I um, am happy to answer any questions. If anybody has any, does anybody have any questions for the mayor's office? Uh, seeing no hands online, Robin, and none in the room. Um, I will say that because pursuant to what Roy has said about composting, that sits directly within a city agency. We would be happy to hook you up with one of our new board members. Yes, yes, that would be that would be fine. Where is his school, by the way? We'll we'll do that offline. Okay, well, great. I'm I'm happy to help, and I know that uh, count, uh, count, uh, Assembly Member Glick's office, but we're happy to. It is a part of Department of Sanitation, and if we can be helpful, we would like to. So thank you, everybody, for your time, and I will see you hopefully tomorrow at the ribbon cutting, and if not, I'll see you soon. Thanks, Robin. Um, next, we're going to recognize Henry Lim from Council Member Marte's office. Henry, welcome. Too many. Everybody wants to be here tonight, Joe. Sorry. Hi, everybody. Can you guys hear me and see me well? Yes, we hear you, Henry. Got it. Okay. So I'm gonna quickly run down the list. Um, first, we'd like to talk to talk about uh, uh, Council Member Marte will host a town hall at the Battery Park City and Fida just, uh, area on Sunday, June 4th, from two to five. Uh, it's co-hosted by CB1 at the Museum of Jewish Heritage. <laughs> There'll be an opportunity to uh, hear what we have been working on and ask any questions directly to the council member uh, and to get uh, involved in the community. Uh, uh, council member Marty continue to rally for uh, the library and CUNY system. The council member has been vocal in his opposition to the proposed budget cuts to CUNY and the public library system and has rallied with uh, PSC CUNY and the uh, NYPL. Um, he attended uh, the uh, Holland Tunnel Rotary Town Hall, where a proposed plan was uh, set on the table to construct a park underneath the Rotary. Uh, this is a very preliminary stage, and the website, I believe, is the rotaryparknyc.org. Uh, we would like uh, input like from the CB1 members. Um, uh, and uh, uh, Council Member Marty has not had a official stand on this issue. We would like to hear more about what people think before move, uh, moving forward. An update on the outdoor dining uh, issue. Uh, a final draft of the permanent outdoor dining bill has been released. Uh, CM Marte has problem with it. Um, there's no public review process for the Rolay Cafe permits, only sidewalk cafes. Um, the four year proposed permit is too long. Uh, midnight uh, is too late for closing and shed should have to come down this year, not end of the next year. Uh, equipment need to be removed inside at night and enforcement was is not strong enough as the, uh, as stated in the current, uh, draft. Uh, an issue with, uh, the Barry battery park city homeowner coalition. The council member, along with Senator Kavanaugh and Assembly Member Fall, met uh, with the Battery Park City Homeowner Coalition and the Authority Board 
for the first meeting to negotiate uh, grand leases. Uh, it was a productive first step. We look forward to continuing negotiation to find a grand lease increase that everyone can agree on. Uh, he also met with the comptroller about battery proxy uh, about back, uh, with factory, uh, sorry, battery proxy authority um, to continue to help reduce ground rent and keeping battery proxy affordable. Uh, we also proposed an audit of the Battery Park City Authority uh, at a meeting between the comptroller and the community uh, stakeholder in the battery uh, at, in Battery Park City with the justice. Uh, lastly, an update on the Five World Trade Center. The ESD is move, moving ahead with the approval for the Five WTC with a proposed thirty percent. Uh, for uh, thirty percent of the unit being affordable, uh, this is an, an acceptable to our office. Uh, we are joined by other local electrics in opposing moving forward until funding is uh, located uh, to make the site as affordable as possible. So far, the uh, LMBC and the uh, ESD boards have approved the plan with uh, Port Authority and Public Authority Control Board coming up. We have testified against moving forward, but the uh, approval have gone uh, forward anyway, and we will continue to advocate for more for affordability and continue to coordinate with other electors uh, to follow up on the funding source uh, where we can, uh, where we think can be used. And lastly, we are hoping to expand Spi and Dre in Battery Park City and former uh, Mitchell Lamas uh, uh, buildings. And there will be updates about that coming real soon. Um, that's a quick rundown of the list. Welcome any question. I see Francis. I see one hand in the room. Francis, go for it. Did I hear you correctly when you said there will be no review, open review process for the uh, open restaurants? Yeah, as the draft currently uh, states, it doesn't include any public review process which uh, the council member is very, uh, uh, we oppose that. We should, we, we should include, he thinks that we should include a public review process at the, in the bill. Yeah, so totally yeah. towards that. Yeah. Anybody so as, else have any any well, we at least get a heads up that he's, you should be writing your council, not this council member, but all council members to, you know, consider this. It's not inappropriate that we should definitely have another. So do you think we should do a resolution? I think that individually, everybody should write to all, the council. all council members and to the speaker of the city council. Um, very much so to speak up. We do have resolutions, which we can certainly include and add. But yeah, to do this without any public review is when this is about quality of life and everything else that we have discussed is just Agreed. Are you are you proposing a resolution? Uh, if you are going to propose a resolution, we can certainly take that up under new business. Is that where you're going? Okay, which we will do at the end. All right. Um, any other questions for our council member novelists? Seeing none online um, and none in the room, Henry. Thank you very much. Our thank last you very much. Last elected representative is Lupe from the Public Advocates Office, who is with us in the room. Lupe. Lupe, solution to out. Thank you. Um, just want to introduce myself. My name is Lupe Hernandez. I do know some of you as a community board uh, resident, longtime community board resident, and have attended these meetings. But I'm here on behalf of the Public Advocates Office, Jumani Williams, and I'm one of the community organizers with Education and Opportunity. However, our office um, will be in all areas will be spreading out amongst the city to attending our community board. So I will be attending these and um, just some things I would like to say. One, we had our state of the people last week um, for those that um, got each department did some as education. We did a mini film festival. Um, it was a great opportunity for Jumani's office and all of the staff to be able to help and communicate the needs and really get the organizing of call to actions for the city. We work with advocates and community um, 
organizations in uplifting the needs of the city. Some of the things, um, in fact, are zero waste composting. I would love to connect the school with the zero waste composting um, as alongside Assembly Blick, but we can help with that. Jumani has been pushing to help bring in more resources to be able to help um, not only our students in temporary housing, but many of the asylum seeking families that are coming in. Uh, we are, he's been pushing against the budget and the cuts that have been, that will be impacting our social services, as well as PSC, CUNY, and our libraries mm -hmm. and education. He did submit testimony specifically regarding our early childhood education um, that is unfortunately not being expanded this year. Um, he's also going to be working on some housing listening tours and, um, here to be able to, you know, uplift and support you guys in any way. So looking forward to collaborating and welcome to the new community board members. Also want to uplift. We did our best to letting our young people know that they could join um, as early as 16. And we look forward to doing that in the next term as well. Thank Perfect. You. Thank you. All righty. With that, all of our electeds have gone. Does anybody have any questions? Oh, Wendy from Public Advocate. So I just uh, thank you for coming. It's really great. Um, and it might be a minor issue, but I don't know if you're familiar with the newest uh, school move in the neighborhood is PS 150. There's still a lot of problems around entering and exiting and safety. And um, I just would ask you to maybe make a little stop by and see what's going on on that front because they still need. Definitely. Um, and just a disclaimer, I, Wendy, I've spoken about this in um, the Youth and Education Committee. I do, I am a federal president appointee on Community Education Council for District 2, which that is my district, and I also live in Independence Plaza, so I've been very much engaged in the PS 150 move and those corridors we need to make safe. So I will definitely bring that to our office. Great, right, thank you. Perfect. Desi? What's your last name, Lupe? Hernandez. Hernandez. Okay. Yes. Anybody else have any questions? And we are glad to have you here. And it's even more fun that you're a member of the CB1. So. Yes. Right. Thank, thank you. you. Fun, fun. All right. Let's get moving along with our agenda. We thank everybody uh, for coming. I'm going to do things a little bit differently. We normally go directly to the district manager's report, but we do have new board members who are with us today. Four out of five of them were able to join us. We did a short orientation. You will now understand when we say brevity is valued um, based on where we are so far. So we're going to start at the very edge over here. It's a name and introduction. So one minute. Thank you. Uh, my name is Joel Grayson. Uh, it's an honor to be here. Uh, it's funny you talked about lowering the age to 16 because I am 16. Uh, and, uh, uh, I'm, I'm really happy to be here. Uh, student government has been a big part of my high school experience, so I'm excited to be working with you all on the real deal. Um, a few things about me, I guess. Uh, next year, I'm going to be doing an independent study, studying New York City government, so no better way than to be hands-on. Um, uh, I've lived in FIDI for my entire life, um, and very, you know, want to make this place a better place, um, and I'm grateful to the work that the community board has done um, for however long it has existed. Um, and uh, Kathleen Hughes is, is the one who brought me here uh, and has taught, told me a lot about what, what has been done here. Um, so I'm very excited to, to get to work with all of you. Perfect. Great. Thank you so much. Welcome aboard. Moving on down the table. Hi folks, my name is Brendan Thompson. Um, I've been in New York only five years now, but um, I am very passionate about being part of this community. Um, I live across the street in Tribeca, um, and I have a big old dog that is uh, very important to me. So um, I, one, when you started mentioning the bikes, uh, my ears popped up because I too have run into those issues, especially on sidewalks um, and with a large dog. So um, I'm sure we'll be having many conversations. Um, as of today, I work at Meta. Um, so don't ask me questions about it. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. Welcome. Go ahead. Hi everyone. My name is Gabriella Rossi. Um very excited to be here. I've been in New York for 10 years, downtown in Battery Park City for two. I work uh, for a social impact development firm, working mostly 
in Midtown Manhattan. Um, but I'm very excited to be with you all. Welcome. Cool. Um, I'm Jared Shear. Uh, I first moved downtown um, below Canal Street in 2002, uh, August 2002, about a block and a half below the Trade Center site. Uh, I lived on Pine Street during Occupy Wall Street. I lived on Battery Park City facing the water during Hurricane Sandy, and I stayed here <laughs> the whole time uh, yeah, during the pandemic. And yeah, watch that. <laughs> One for CB one. Exactly. Uh, good time to buy for me to buy a lot of ticket, maybe. But uh, you know, I've lived down here for a long time, and I've seen a lot, and uh, I'm just excited to be able to contribute. Well, welcome, Brent. Welcome, welcome. Um, for the rest of the board, if anyone is interesting, I need five mentors this round. Um, so certainly email me. Not Lucian, not Lucy, not Onez, just email me directly if you're willing to mentor any of our fabulous new people. We have a fifth person who is unable to join us this evening because work notifications went out rather recently, <laughs> um, but you'll meet her next month. All righty. Um, so moving on from that, you'll see from the slideshow that I do not have my typical where the, where has the chair been for the last month? I will tell you that by World Trade and testifying in LMDC is has been a large topic as well as the jail both of which we are still fighting and there's still fight left there we have to find money on the table to create more affordable housing that's just it um we did meet with some of the residents uh, surrounding the Ann street garage um which maybe Lucian will speak about in his report and we also participated in a mental health forum with five other community boards three boards sponsored three boards supported this is what we do to try and push change forward. It's a great mental health uh, forum talking about where we've been, where we are, and what needs to be done for the future, and how potentially as communities we can look at um, opportunities for that. Um, Alice and I met the new leadership at Howard Hughes, and again, as always, walked the rooftop of Pier 17 and talked about public space and public restrooms. <laughs> so, uh, that is where I'm going this time for a very short report. Um, let's wait to pull our slides up. Nope, nope, not yet. Not licensing yet. We're going to go to the district manager's report next. But before we get there, I didn't want Lucian to bury the lead. For those who I've had the opportunity to talk to, and I would have liked to have called every single one of the 50 of you in person, but I've only gotten about half done. So the rest will maybe find this a surprise. Um, Lucian resigned yesterday. Mm -hmm. oh. um, it is after my panic subsided, I will <laughs> honestly say, and with tears rolling down my face in all honesty for the gratitude and, and just amazing work that he has done with our board for the last five years. There is no doubt we would not have gone through this pandemic. We would not have come out the far side of the pandemic. We would not have been able to be the board that we are that has helped set the pathway for other boards to follow in terms of being able to operate remotely, being able to learn how to figure this out in hybrid. Some of it has not been easy, but through it all, we've had Lucian helping and guiding. So as great as people have said to me, no, I really got this. I am only successful because of the office behind me, because of Lucy, Onej, and Lucian. This is how we work with Alice and everybody who's up here supporting. For the calls that I've made to every one of you who I've leaned on, I appreciate that. But I also have to say, as bittersweet and horrible as this is for Community Board 1 in the next couple months, the best thing that we can do and the most, I think Bob Schneck really did a lot in terms of setting tone, right? Mm -hmm. So what would Bob say if we sit here in this month? What would Bob say? And Bob would have written poetry. Mm -hmm. Bob would have had photos. But most of all, Bob would have, would have said how fantastic that was. Now, not that Lucian's leaving, but that we've been able to help him go to the next step and that we've been a part of his journey to go someplace that will help him grow work for his family of course i'm sure he would like to be home at night versus being with us as much. Oh, no. how charming that 
I have. Wait a second. <laughs> so with that, I mix the good welcomes to the new board members. We're really grateful to have you here. Roll your sleeves up. We're going to have a lot to do. Um, with sadness, we say goodbye permanently to Bob. But if anybody wants to read any of his poetry, we have it. Um, we will share any information we have about any memorials soon. Our best wishes to Justine, who is not with us tonight because her mom has passed, although she didn't tell me I could say that. But, um, no, we that. but she was 100, yeah. And although I wish I would have had 100 years with Lucian, because that certainly would have made my job easier, um, we also wish Lucian best wishes. And I am going to ask graciously for all of your patience as it takes a while with the city to be able to find someone. You can't replace a Lucian, but we can hire them. And they will be a new somebody, but until then, we may be asking you to do a little bit more than you could have. If you couldn't figure out how to get yourself online before, oh man, you got to do it. Yes, we have maybe. I need every board member to be a little bit responsible for themselves to get themselves to meetings to help support the chair and co chair of their committees that they sit on. Don't make your committee chair chase you because that's who's going to have to chase you. It's not going to be Lucy or Onej or me. And believe me, you don't want me chasing you. I ain't a lot of fun when I'm on that road. So go to the meetings, show up, support your chair, co chairs. If somebody asks you to help with the resolution, please do so because. That's the only way we're going to get through the next several months. All right. Does anybody have any questions for me before I hand it over to our district manager for his report? His last report. Colin. <laughs> I'm sure it's laughing right, but I just want to make a motion for some sort of framed appreciation, something that's nice looking on a wall for appreciation. Here, here. You mean a picture of all of us? No, it's not. board one class of 23 would be an excellent photo. Right. Maybe at the end of this meeting, we could put a camera on one of these tripods to try to take something. Yeah. Um, if everyone's willing, you know, everybody in this room, I would love to, you know, members of the public included, because you all are what, you know, makes this meeting. Uh, but yes, but anyways. So everyone's portrait on Zoom. Yeah. <laughs> So on that note, I close my chair report. I hand it to the district manager for his last district manager report for the month of May, and he will only be with us through the first two weeks of June. Boo! Oh, Sammy, thank you so much, and thanks to uh, the leadership of CB1, um, and thank you to. All the chairs of CB1 and the members of CB1, and of course, my fellow staff. Um, thank you. Um, I am Lucia Reynolds, the district manager of CB1, for a couple more weeks. Um, uh, I'll just say that I'm going to uh, HPD, that's Housing Preservation and Development. That's the agency that develops and tries to preserve affordable housing. Um, you all have this yourselves to blame for this. You passed a resolution saying, you wanted more affordable housing, so I took that to me. <laughs> and yes, Richard, I like that. Uh, and so that's why I'm doing that. Uh, 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 mole in the HPD, and I thought that's what you wanted. Uh, but uh, you all are, are uh, you've been my work family, right? I mean, people, that's a thing, right? Um, and, and I've spent a lot of time with all of you in lots of different ways, uh, in person, remote, Hybrid, um, you all are the people who show up to make things better uh, for Lower Manhattan. Lower Manhattan is, you, know, you it goes without saying, all the the challenges and horrible things that have befallen this community, and yet everyone, um, literally to their last breath, like, have come and fought for this community. And I can only be nothing less than honored to be here and try to help you all achieve. Um, uh, these goals to protect one another, to protect future generations of Lower Manhattanites, um, and, uh, and so I, I, I just thank you all for the for the, the grace and the patience that you've given me as I try to get the city agencies to do things um, uh, and to to come to to your meetings. And um, I uh, I ask that um, you all are also very gentle on the staff. Uh, they have a lot. 
on their plate now. Um, they're going to be fighting like hell to, to keep everything running. Um, it's a three person staff. When you lose a whole person, it's a big deal. Um, and and uh, so anyway, so I want to thank you all for that and this experience. I, I came I came to you all via a full board meeting when you all voted to hire me. Um, and I, I, I leave you all here at a full board meeting uh, filled with gratitude uh, and, and um, just filled with, with the experience and, and the friendships and, and all that. Um, I will also say one thing um, about Bob Schneck because I want to close also uh, talking about Bob Schneck. Um, Bob Schneck was probably the first uh, Lower Manhattan night that I met uh, on CB1 that I got to know. It was 2014. Um, it was actually this room. Uh, it was a, a borough board meeting had ended and I had just been hired by Gail and I was her urban planner for Upper Manhattan. And I found a gentleman wandering the halls looking to talk to somebody <laughs> about passive health. And, and, and I think actually, uh, uh, Edith, the front desk person, solution, uh, this gentleman's looking to talk about something about a building. You're a planner. Will you talk to him, please? And so he said, Oh, you know, I'm Bob Schneck and I, I want to talk to you about passive house. And I listened to what he had to say and I said, Well, you know, we should try to get you on the next agenda for the borough board meeting. So I talked to my boss, Basha Gerhards, who you all know. Um, who was your urban planner for Gale, and we got Bob on the agenda because you all had passed resolutions about passive house, and he got the borough board to pass a resolution for the entire borough supporting passive house, and that resolution got CB11 to pass a resolution to support the passive house. That's where I live, East Harlem, CB11. And when the city said we're going to redevelop an entire city block, they looked at CB11's resolution. They said, and we're going to make it passive house. So I can draw a straight line back to you know a, a multi almost you know two thousand unit development, the largest passive house building in North America, to the advocacy of CB one, but then the unrelenting advocacy of Bob Schneck. Yes, and that's what all of you do. You all embody that, and you all have straight line points that end to some awesome result, and uh, and you should all be. You know, never stop, but just know that all this effort you put in every day, you may not yield exactly what you want, and it may not be the timeline that you are happiest with, but things change because of what you all say. And I'm and, and Bob showed that and, and you all show that every day, and I'm thankful to you. So thank you. Ryan Gold. Yeah, I'll be right by you. You know, Blondie, I'm going to get you, get you. Yeah. yeah. I'll see the flyers. Oh, it's a All right. Do you have anything else with your district manager report? So. Oh, uh, so I, I've, been, I've been trying to get DOB, track down DOB, and get the answers about Ann Street. Um, Good luck. A normal GO, DOB person is on a special assignment. Uh, I talked, I've been talking to somebody else who's very, very good, um, but I really want to drill down. I just don't want to be like, these, these are the units with the partial. Um, uh, vacates on it. I want to get down to the, the business of why, how long, what's the underlying reason. Um, and so they're digging on that. I really want to have more, uh, you know, detail for this meeting, but it's going to have to come as an email update, unfortunately. Um, hmm. So, yeah, and if there's any other questions on that, you know, from fire, to, um, but, you know, they're, they're still doing demolition. Um, if you have a vehicle that was in any of those buildings called 311, I don't know that it's effective. No. no, they're terrible. It's it's they don't called them. Little Pete's in Apple Pack, New York. I may have the number. Anyone needs it? Let me know. I've been through it. I can be honest. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, dude, where's my car? The home deck. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't TV though. Yeah. yeah. All right. right in. So with that, let's get rolling into our committee reports. We can all roast and toast Asian, um as much as we can through the meeting. <laughs> All right, let's move on. First committee is going to be Francis in licensing. Good evening, everybody. Um, okay, I'm going to do my best. There's 10 of them, and some of them are quite complicated, but we'll get through it. The first one is 200 Liberty Street. Um, it's in Barry Park City. Basically, and it's a, it's an open space that has been redeveloped into this uh, venue for golf simulating experiences. 
and there were some issues in terms of the outdoor uh, uh, terrace and uh, there was a couple of residents that had some issues about um, in terms of the, the, the times that they that they have uh, their clients out there and everything was agreed to um, in this resolution. Um, I think that the most important whereas is the fact that the community has a responsibility because this is a um, an establishment that has been uh, considered considered a large venue, and when they're considered a large venue, part of that stipulation is that they're supposed to have a, a sign posted in their in, in their place that has that outlines all of the conditions that they have gone through. So if um, they call 311 and they're not satisfied with, with the results that they get, they could go to the establishment and look for this. It's supposed to be posted. So that's an important uh, whereas. Um, Do you want to take them together and if so in one no, more? Okay. So let's let's keep. let's do Battery Park City. All right. So we're gonna go by affirmation. All right. This and for those who I see no hands raised in the room. So it's 200 liberty. This is 200 liberty. Do I have a vote for the new members? For the new members. Thank you. Um, when we go by affirmation, it means that we will assume that you are a yes, we then will call for no's, recusals, and abstentions, right? When we are in a hybrid, when we're all in person, you can do a hand raise in the room, or you can just go by eyes. When we are hybrid, you have to look at both, all right? So, But if you're anything other than I, say your name and you're abstaining, you're recusing, you're opposing. Correct. Okay, so no booze and no. So I have a call a call to a question. Call question. Do I have a second? second. Fantastic. Okay, for 200 Liberty, we'll go by affirmation. Are there any notes? Seeing none online or in the room, are there any recusals? Seeing none online or in the room, are there any abstentions? Yes, <laughs> All four new members <laughs> abstain in the room and Brown Kennedy abstains. So Grace and Brown Kennedy can be heard members for this room. For those people who were not in the room when roll call was taken for attendance, um, we need to have your vote recorded, which means you must say your vote by last name first. Amoruso? Yes. Yeah. Amoruso is marked here for the meeting. James? James, yes. Airman? Airman, yes. Thank you. Okay. I think that's everybody in the room and everybody who is new that's been now counted for our service. Robinson, yes. <laughs> Oh, thank you, Robinson. Camera's on for everyone who's remote, please. I know it feels like my energy is here all the time, right? Right. It's all floating. <laughs> okay. Um, Bruce, don't forget if you are online, your cameras must be on in order to vote. Okay. As, um, okay. Thank you, Bruce. I see you. Uh, Andrew Zelter, I see you. Thank you. I see you. Thank you. Laura, I need your camera on to be counted for both. Oh, Dancing. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Fantastic. Oh, All right. Next. Oh, I, I've got me too. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm here. It's Laura. Okay. Thank you, Laura. You got to keep your camera on the boat. Not my rules. Just following them. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, I know. Sorry. But I was voting by affirmation. Affirmation includes your camera on, my friend. Okay. Okay. Francisco. 456 Greenwich is a headache. That's a down man. Yeah. <laughs> 
it's a, a luxury hotel that um, the community has had a lot of input. As a matter of fact, uh, one of the residents spoke at the uh, public session in terms of what they had read in terms of this this resolution mm -hmm. um, that they were feeling comfortable with it. They they there was a lot of negotiation back and forth because at first the two issues were the rooftop and the whole membership issue which they threw in the pot later on. They didn't tell us about this which hotel in the very beginning. Can I do that Excuse me? Which hotel is this? Barry. Oh who Barry? Okay. The name of the hotel. The Barry. Name of the hotel. Oh, Barry. Yes. Okay. Barrier. Barrier. Um, Barrier. I don't remember. Okay. The first, when they first came to us, like six months ago, they wanted this elaborate setup on the roof with these chalets, and they wanted to have all of this stuff, and it was nice. like, no, the community wasn't having it. So they went back to the drawing board, and they came back, and they really uh, uh, accepted a lot of concessions. In terms of what they wanted and what they what they actually got, you know, they have a limited amount of uh, people that they they can have on the rooftop. Mm. Uh, it can only be for the patrons of the hotel. Now, as far as the membership goes, they we didn't know anything about the membership until uh, recently, so the, till the last meeting. They're offering these, you know, like uh, these special memberships, like with the hotels. And if you stay X amount of times, you can have privileges, but they say it's supposed to have a really nice spa and all of these other amenities that people are going to want to have a membership to. Once they stay in a hotel, they're going to want to come back and use the facilities. So they want to, they want to have these memberships for people. And um, so that was getting to be a bit uncontrollable because we wanted, uh, the community wanted to have some control over the, the amount of people that were coming in and who was going to be using the uh, the rooftop and who wasn't. So we figured that we got it down uh, uh, to this, whereas, and I'm, I'm, I'm not comfortable with what's written here, so I don't know. Okay. So I think this this uh, this where this whereas where it says the applicant has agreed to the rooftop will accommodate no more than forty six people. Um, what should what I think should be in there is something about music, and it's and it's not, and that it only includes hotel guests and no outside people. So um, I'm not. I think those things need need to be in there. Um, Are you making a friendly amendment to include? I don't know because I had I, I hadn't. Oh, the stipulations is that what the stipulations say? We don't remember. We don't remember. I thought that in the meeting, you know, and I didn't have a chance to go over the tape and go over this. But the, is there is there a, is there a background music stipulation? There's nothing here for the rooftop. For the other part, the other part, yes, it indicates. In terms of bold speakers and background music for, you know, but it doesn't say anything about the rooftop and in terms of music. And I remember we had a discussion about that. Okay, so then we, said, don't we need to add that in because well, that's, that's right. I know, but it's not. If here. I remember correctly, that's why so I did that. Friday Well, I mean, I said, no, we're going to add that in. Let's see. Just an amendment. Okay, so I'm going to say your friendly amendment has been seconded. It's been in, it's been put in. To reflect the fact that that will include the rooftop. Okay. And the so that's the time closing of the rooftop. It's nine o'clock. You have the what same, they agreed to. Okay, the same. The, everything in here is what they what they agreed to, and the the other thing was uh, that I was unclear about was having hotel uh, having outside guests on the rooftop. The number we because we spent a lot of time on the amount of people up there and who was going to be serving liquor and who was going to have control over that and that's all in here. But there's nothing about um, outside guests. That is, is, I would suspect about the number in the terms of number of people. Like some some it's all really well, the 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 number, okay, hold on, guys. If it's that, not the stipulation, sorry, sorry. if it's not the stipulation, and it wasn't discussed at the meeting. Yeah. We cannot bring it into here. Well, this was discussed. It was discussed. Yeah. But was it, it was so, discussed and agreed as part of the agreement when you voted? There's a difference between the, the general outside um, public 
and members of the outside public that are members, members. of this special thing that they have. Because right. I, my my recollection is that those people who are members get sort of it's a rule. Whatever it's a benefits, right? Yeah, like, can they can they get, 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 get a member? May not that right. may not may be using the facility, but not be a guest. Right. Yeah. So it may not right. be able to. Yeah. Be that, a guest. that needs to be clarified. They don't. They they if they're a member, they're already included. They're a member. They're so they're not a hotel guest, but they are a member of the hotel. They're entitled to use the, the services yeah. that any other guest is entitled to use, right. even, right. even if they're not staying at the hotel. Right. That's. Okay. But other okay. than that, it, it, that should be limited to. That's the language. Right, not members of the general public right. that are not members. Limited to members hotel. and guests. Okay. <laughs> All right. Understood. That is clarified for anyone. Does anyone have any other questions or comments? Uh, Colin, and then yeah. just just one of the process here is the applicantism here, and applicants agreed to a resolution that made its way to the full board, and we're kind of changing it up on them without them here. That doesn't feel very transparent to me. I'm not for or against this. I'm just always thinking of the people who are yeah. trying to build businesses. That's all. That's what we're saying. Is it rejecting the application? Stop, anyway. stop, 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 Bob. Yeah. What we're saying is if it was discussed in the meeting and it was reviewed, it was potentially omitted, then we can include it. If it's not discussed in the meeting, that we can't. That's the meeting. Yes, we can send it back. There's a whole bunch of meeting members, members that it would affect the meeting. They don't remember it that way. No, I get it. And I, 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 they're going to make their application if it's just like clarifying the language. They're still going to apply and you, if the, you all can figure out exactly yeah. what the right to be precise. I think that's fine. You guys can do it. Yeah. I think I, I think, like I said, for the other, uh, the other applicant that. The large venue stipulation is very important because it, it it says that they they need the community needs to take some role active role in terms of you know calling three one one and being part of the whole process if they see that they're not you know that the 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 applicant is not responding to what they agreed to in the stipulation but okay. Now, I would add they're not well, because they're Mariana. Now, Mariana, <laughs> the gentleman has his hand up. I just have a question Does hotel guests specifically mean overnight guests? And I'm asking because most hotels rent their spaces out for private events. So I didn't hear the last part. Most hotels will rent their spaces, including their rooftops, out for private events. They can't do it. Okay. That, that's, that's that was discussed in the Okay, that's um, Mariana and then Mark. Yeah, I was just one, I was just trying to say that Max would have been here if he, if we weren't in agreement. He right, been here again. Yeah. He's been here yeah. every month. So the yeah. he's not here is because we agreed at the meeting. Yeah, and the, what we go into that resolution. Right, or, and the and the okay. Set good. Good. Okay. Uh, Mark. What's the point of information? We vote on these things in committee. They come to the full board. The process is that anyone can make an amendment and agree or agree to it. The applicant is always told to come to the full board meetings in case anything comes up. So if he's here or he's not here it is not relevant to the process. And an amendment can be made even if someone thinks the time is incorrect and it was agreed to at the closing time is incorrect and it was agreed to at the full board. Someone may say, Wait, who, who says 2 a.m.? It should really be 12 noon, uh, 12, 12, 12 p.m. or something like that, or 12 a.m. That amendment can be made if it's agreed to and voted on. Whether or not it's discussed the full board is not relevant. Correct, so, Mark, so. but it is a nuance that you are already discussing closing time. If you yeah. didn't discuss a, the specifics about the public being allowed in yeah. versus it being a private club, then that then the whole thing would then go back to committee. Well, but what Mariama is saying, and I'm not, I don't really want to discuss process at the moment, is that everything that's in the resolution was included, <laughs> was discussed, and was approved. Yeah. So I would like to call the question that part of the resolution that part as it's been. Second. 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 Fantastic. Second. So let's uh the resolution will go back. Okay. So again, we're going to go by affirmation. Everybody online, please make sure your cameras are on so I don't need to ask you individually. I'm saying that as a group. Hint, hint, hint. 
Okay, fantastic. Going by affirmation. Fantastic. Um, do I have any no's? Ever Russo, no. There's uncertainty, so I don't. There's uncertainty. That's why I'm voting no. That's fine. Uncertainty. That's right. There's no uncertainty. There's no uncertainty. There's, no uncertainty. There's only uncertainty in the way Francis is presenting. No one has objected to Francis. Yeah. It's just not this. It's like it's like it's like it's what it is. Yeah. Sorry, guys, would you would you uh, just, just say your name, please? Yeah. All right. So again, there's no discussion once we call, Follow and it's been seconded. Yeah. So I've got one no by Amoruso. You. Thank you. You is no. Any other no's? Hearing no more no's in the room. Any no's online? Okay. Are there any abstentions? Blank abstain. Grayson abstains. Um. Thompson. Rossi. Sure. <laughs> okay. Are there any abstentions online? Sorry, I, I got abstentions. Oh, sorry. No. Okay. Mm -hmm. I got blank Grayson Thompson Rossi and something I scribbled. Sure. Song here. Sure. Song and share. Which song? Here or song. All right. Mm -hmm. Are there any recusals? Mm -hmm. Hearing none, motion passes. Okay, fantastic. Let's go to the next one. Can I take uh, these two together? 388 Greenwich, 14th floor, um, one through four, because it's the city, is this. Yep. 388 Greenwich, 388 Greenwich. Um, are you going to take 6 York, 39 Avenue in America, so 133 Dwayne, the Brexford, try back in camera? That's actually, uh, yes. Perfect, because the um, it's a hotel and a restaurant. The rest Perfect the hotel and they so according to the up. agenda for Tribeca, we're taking items two, two three, three yeah, four, five, and six, six together for a vote. Are you comfortable taking the financial yeah. district one, two, and three with that as well? Hold on, Mark, please wait. Are you Francis? Are you okay to take the financial district together as well? Which one do you want to make? Oh, yeah, yes, because that's all that's one so 140 next. Broadway. We're going to take that one, three World Trade Center, and 49 45 John Street. All so we're going to take all of those together, together. all the rest of licensing, correct? Except for 133 blank, 133 blank, blank. Where is it? Oh. So 130 that is the old city hall restaurant and then okay. lots so everything other than 133 we're gonna take together, right? So 388 Greenwich, both of those, six York, 39 Avenue yeah. in the Americas, yeah. 140 Broadway, yeah. three World Trade Center, and 45 John Street. Yes. Everybody on the same page so far? Yes. So, do I have a, any questions on any of those? Alice is first, and then Mark. Can you confirm that any of the, any of these restaurants are in fact only open private for private membership dining or membership club buyouts? Okay. No. Um, are they are they entirely open to the public? Or are they for are they private clubs? Mm -hmm. They're not. They're not, they're not, they're not, they're not they're private. They're employment. Employer. Saying, can anybody who pays money sit down and eat a meal, or well, you have to have the ones that are in the no, the city, the, the city, the city, city, city that that's just three, for their employees, three, three, and the other one, three were afraid, that's just for the, the people in the building. So I don't know whether you consider that private. The answer is no. Yeah. That they are. All right. Okay. Are, Any other questions? <laughs> are you okay with that? Yeah. I mean, you understand? Yeah. yeah. Mark, and you're next. Yeah, so for 388 Greenwich Street, uh, for those who don't know, that's the Citibank building mm -hmm. that is between uh, Northmore and Uber Street, and mm -hmm. B Street, T, uh, T, T Street's into it, uh, exiting from the Holland Tunnel. Now, uh, there's been issue there with traffic congestion and pickups and taxis and black cars and this and, and that for, for years. We were actually addressing it with the governor fast person before the shutdown started mm -hmm. and um and then of course you never were able to get back to it who was in quality life committee at that time uh 
this is just going to exacerbate the, uh, the already double and triple parking of taxis and bus pickups and this and that in front of the building, uh, especially during uh, after we like really between three and four and, and seven and eight. It's really a nightmare. Uh, I was not satisfied with the explanation on how they're going to mitigate this. Uh, so that's why I voted against it, and it's an issue that's not going to go away that we still need to deal with. Uh, it, 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 it's, it's a big, big problem, adjustment quality of life problem over there. So I think it's, what you're saying is that you'd like the management of the building to right. come to quality of life to talk about traffic enforcement or to, to transportation. Yeah, that's what we did last, uh, three years ago. Okay. Harold Jennings was a stubborn affairs guy. Mm -hmm. And we were, there were conversations about where they actually hire a person that would be outside. Okay, and that's, not, that's not relevant for the liquor license itself. Well, just, well no, they wait, did, wait, wait, they, they did present a traffic plan, but uh, I didn't think it was adequate. It was like, just, uh, we don't think it'll be a problem because it's only employees, it won't be others. So, but that's, you know, that's, that was, well, that's, that, that there'll was, be more, there'll be more pickups and later at night, things like that. So. Okay. It'll just be make it worse. But it's in here. It's in you know, here. It's, it's I know it's there. there. Yeah. It has to utilize okay. security and okay. But let's let, all right. point made, Mark. Thank you very much. All right. So for all the future, right. we'll... I see no. I see no hands online. Do I have anybody who would be willing to call a question? I did. Call a question. Oh gosh, I didn't hear you. I'm sorry. Oh, thank God. All right, so we're rolling on 380 Greenwich, 6 York, 39 Avenue, Heritage, 140 Broadway, 3 World Trade, and 45 John, going by affirmation. If you have a vote that is not an affirmation, please detail the address that you are particularly voting. So are there any notes? Camera on. Camera's on for everybody. Don't make me chase you. I already got you. Okay, Amaru, so what are you saying no to? Which 388 one? Greenwich. 3D Greenwich. Is that it? No. Uh, 140 Broadway. And 45 John. All those. Thank you very much. Are there any other no's? Are there any recusals? Seeing no no's and no recusals online or in the room. Are there any abstentions? Nice and slow. Last name loud enough, please. Abstentions. Grace and abstains. To one or to all? To all. Thank you, Mr. Grayson. Next. Thompson abstains to all. Thank you, Mr. Thompson. Rossi abstains to all. Thank you, Ms. Rossi. And Shear abstains to all. Thank you, Mr. Shear. Okay. With hearing all of that, oh, Alan, you might. I might abstain on 388 Greenwich, mm -hmm. two of them, and the rest are okay. Yes. Okay. With that, motions pass. Let's do the last one, 133 Dwayne Street. Um, um, okay, Francis. I'm thinking this separate is because there was a lot of community there was a lot concern of about this establishment yes. and the establishment that made a, a lot of concessions. You know, they've, they've, the community's main concern was in terms of the loud and the destructiveness that they used to have in the past with large parties and they used to uh, rent out. They, they had a, a DJ downstairs. Um, they used to make a lot of noise and the community wasn't happy. So they, uh, the, the establishment agreed to not have a DJ and they signed a stipulation for that. Um, and in terms of their closing, they would close earlier. Okay. Are there any questions from anybody online? An online the applicant, they agreed to opening without having a DJ initially put in and, and in terms of six months, they're going to come back to the community board to request to have a DJ. So it's going to be six months, and if if the community has not called to me one, um, then when they come back in six months, there's uh, are there any questions? But yes, Mariana. So there was also concern about the fact that Wayne Street is a one-way narrow street. Oh, with a firehouse on it, and that there are black cars and such parked in front of the uh, facility may present a problem with, you know, not only pedestrian traffic and, and um, residents getting to a traffic, but also emergency vehicles that need to get down that block. So that was just something else to to consider. They said that they would try to like mediate and 
kick the black cars off the street, but I don't, I don't honestly know how you do that. Necessarily. Well, perfect. Um, Pat wants to add to that. Yeah, I mean, they also said that because it's a restaurant, people wouldn't be leaving all at one time. Yeah. Like people would be leaving when they finish the yes. All righty. Uh, any other questions? I see no hand. Oh, I see two hands online. Real Laura and then Bruce. Laura? Um, yeah, did, did any residents complain about this? Yes. yes. Board yeah. members, too. Okay. Um, yes, they did, and, that's why and they, they came to the meeting, yeah. and that's why some of the stipulations were changed. Bruce? Uh, you got uh, mute. Yeah. Hello? Hello? Hi, Bruce. Oh, okay. Um, this is a completely different applicant than the prior establishment that that, that gathered so many complaints. Is that, is that correct? Yes, yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, are there any other questions in the room? Do I have a call to question? Call the question. Awesome. So again, we'll run by affirmation, right? Do I hear any no's? No no's in the room, any no's online? Okay, abstentions. Again, nice and slow. Blank abstain. Grayson abstains. Thompson abstains. Rossi abstains. And sure abstains. Are there any other abstentions in the room? Point Street. Yeah. Okay. Are there any abstentions online? Yes, I abstain. Laura abstains. Sorry. Okay. Any other extensions? Last call for extensions. Are there any recusals? Hearing none, motion passes. Thank you very much. Francis, next committee. Yeah. Oh, it's great. Yeah. Yeah. Rosa Chang, I believe we're doing the report. And since it's reports without resolutions, quick, please. <laughs> So, first of all, credit where credit is due. This was all written by Trisha, who works super, super hard. I just read it. <laughs> okay, so um, President Biden. Soccer Club presentation by Owen Thomas. Owen, who is a high school senior, is a CB1 resident, and came to, by the way, can people hear me online? Uh, you need to speak a little bit louder. I'm hearing that you're not quite loud enough. And came to ask for support for the non nonprofit soccer club he belongs to. Two Bridges is one of the only non pay to play soccer clubs in New York City. It draws kids from all five boroughs and it's run by volunteers. They also offer educational support to team members. They have requested the following in terms of support, and we thought to read it aloud here tonight in case anyone here tonight has any resources for them. A. Indoor gym space in the winter, December through March, one time a week. B, outdoor field space in the fall, September through November and spring, which is March to May. C, equipment, balls, homes, pennies, one time a week. D, community partnerships, partnerships with local businesses to share TBFC's mission with the community and receive support in the character development and programming needs of the club. E, transportation support to and from matches. F, mentorship for student athletes. G, board member recruitment. H, college guidance counselors and support. I, consistent weekly quiet space to host tutoring. J, educational tutoring volunteers and programming. And K is immigration support. Youth and Ed will be looking to help find support for them. If anyone has resources to offer, please contact the office. Item two, presentation on citywide wildflower campaign by Mariel Anzalone, Anzalone from New York City Wildflower Week to engage local schools. Mariel is a botanist in New York City and is looking to connect to our local schools to provide field trips and after school camp programming. It was really awesome. Harbor School update. Plans for the new annex should be available as soon as July. Uh, item four, high school admissions offers were provided by IS-289, PS-276, and Lower Manhattan Community Middle School. Bruce Street, has, yeah, Bruce Street has not yet responded. 
Uh, the news was better this year. We had an average of 93% students receive an offer from their list with an average of 55% receiving an offer in their top five choices. The students who did not receive an offer on their list did receive an offer to another school. Wait lists were immediately formed and we will receive an update on those as these are released over the summer. Something new we saw this year was that most of the students who received a specialized school offer did not receive an additional offer at a non specialized school. Thank you, Tricia. Done. Okay. Awesome. Right Thank it. you very, very much, everybody. Um, moving on to the next committee. I need questions. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Questions. Um, I, I voted for the flowers, but. <laughs> <laughs> No, when, when am I going to find out? I'm going to have to ask her. I'll ask her. I have her contact us. Okay. Oh, my God. Well, there's a committee. You never know. Okay, Rosa, thank you very much. Trisha, drive safely. And next committee. Okay, I guess that's me. Parks and Yes, sir. All right. Let me turn around so I can see what's up. What my slide looks like. Okay, so first we yes, have. Oh, thank you. Very good. Thank you, Ms. Okay, first item Governor's Island. Um, we had an update from Sarah Krapine uh, about the new season that's just getting underway at Governor's Island. And as you can see from these slides, Quite a bit of activity is getting underway. Their summer hours are just getting started. This Saturday, they expand tremendously. They're right there. I don't have to read them for you. But uh, there are a lot of activities starting up. Uh, seven miles of car-free paths from biking, strolling, skating, running, with bike rentals available. They have walking tours, they have playgrounds and ball fields, uh, free exhibits and art installations, art shows, concerts, films, lots of uh, food vendors. Uh, uh, as I said, the summer hours are starting this weekend. And uh, they last in September. And the ferry service is from the Battery Maritime Building, which, as you know, is down by the Battery. So anyone interested should take advantage and get over there. It's very beautiful. Okay, and the other major item that we talked about a bit that you already heard about is the reopening of the Brooklyn banks. You already uh, heard from uh, about that from some of the elected officials. And let me just give you a little background, especially for some of the uh, newer members of the board. This is an issue that, um, you know, the area beneath the Brooklyn Bridge uh, some people call it the arches. That's what the city is calling it. We used to call it the Brooklyn Banks. It's been around and it was around for years. It was a major recreation center for this community and it served the community for well, for like a decade until the city closed it without any notification in 2010. And it was a big surprise and it was a big disappointment to this community because it was basically the only and the major recreation center for the east side of uh, community board one. It provided an area where kids could skateboard. Skateboard was the major recreation uh, area and it was a worldwide, uh, you know, famous recreation skateboarding area that you know, people from around the world knew about, but it also had bike riding, it had, uh, it had basketball, it had, um, you know, uh, it had just uh, places for people to sit and relax. It had, you know, just a big area for people to, you know, enjoy open space under the Brooklyn Bridge. 
And then again, as we, like we said, uh, in 2010, the city closed it and they didn't even inform us. And then when the community board, us, we said, what's going on? What What's going on? And they told us, oh, we need to do some work on the bridge, but don't worry, we're going to reopen it after the work is done in three or four years. Don't worry, it'll come back. So that was 2010. <laughs> It's now 2023. <laughs> and, and let me just uh, fast forward. And had not Rose Chang joined our community board and taken on this project, I, I, I'll take some credit because I was the one who initially made a lot of noise about it, but it was really Rosa who took this under under advisement and ran without Rosa, this would not have advanced. I, I maybe wrote a lot of resolutions and letters and complained a lot, but Rosa really organized and she did the Bob Schneck stuff that had to be done for this project. And she deserves, you know, the vast majority of the credit for getting us to where we are today. So, uh, Thank you, thank you. But I would just caution that work needs to still be done. As I pointed out at our committee meeting, the city still has not assigned an agency to oversee who would clean, who would clean it, who would uh, be responsible for maintenance and security. So if we have issues, with that space, if someone calls us and says, you know, you know, there's homeless there, or there, there are people, you know, who aren't uh, abiding by any of the rules, we have no one to complain to. I asked the parks representative at the meeting, uh, can I call you if something comes up? No, we're not responsible. So we definitely have to take that on. And I admire you and all your comrades for stepping up and, uh, you know, but that's not enough. The city has to do their part. So let's, let's keep pressing and, you know, I will be there with you tomorrow and let's keep at it. And again, thank you, thank you, thank you. But uh, let's keep going and more needs to be done. And I'll, I'll leave it at that. Thank you. Well, and I'm going to say um, for anybody who doesn't know Rosa, um, it's not only Rosa talking at every parks committee meeting, but every meeting that Rosa went to that had anything about anything, Rosa said, Are you going to mention that? You're, I hear you're going to that meeting. Are you going to, can you mention this? And that went from youth and ed, and I was with her at um, a meeting at Murray Bertram with all of the schools getting there. Every single place, the borough president's inauguration, every single place, that's where Rosa was waving her flag. And that's what it takes, unfortunately. So we need as a board to support this. And pursuant to what Paul's saying is, at every single point that you see the parks and Department of Transportation and NYPD and everybody else say the same thing. We got it. Now, how do we keep it safe and clean? Um, and I'm going to go for questions around before I come back to you. Wendy had her hand up, then Mariana, and then Morton, and then Rosa. So along those lines, Rosa rocks, and I'm going to be there tomorrow with signs. So I am making posters and holding posters to say, what I asked for Rosa, what would be helpful? And she said, thank you, Mayor Adams, more please. That will be one of my signs and maybe we add what, what else we want. But I would encourage anyone who's coming tomorrow, even if it's just a sign to hold up. Um, visuals matter, the mayor needs to be thanked. Everyone that's there that worked on it needs to make, the, make sure they feel good. That's one acre, there's nine acres. And so one of the things that I will say is the angry mob politely, uh, with signs, visuals matter. So anyone else, bring a sign. Thank you. And we do have oh, support for this park 
from every single elected official. Mm -hmm. Everyone. So, you know, this is how good trouble gets done and good works get done. Mariana. Mm -hmm. So, did they specify, Paul, like in the meantime, we do 311 and 911, but there's nobody in the Did you even go that far? No, I mean, basically, mm -hmm. what's in place now is just the citizens who are part of Rosa and her citizen support group were supposed to mm -hmm. come to them, and they're supposed to sort of take care of problems. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's 311 and 911, just like anywhere else in the city. Right, it's, it's 311 three, three, and 911, yeah, and quite frankly, our, our city council person knows, and he's working on it. It's not, you know, there there's work being done. It just doesn't mean that it's, you know, you can't call Rosa. Right, we need to call our city agency. But we need to get uh, a better system in place for that. I believe. Yeah. Um, wait, who was after Mariano was Morton and Rosa, and then we go. And I yep. have my uh, Oh, sorry, Bruce. Uh, well, I one. Yeah, I know that it's not only the Rosa lobby community, mm. mobilize all the political support mm -hmm. from all the downtown. I think that and, and elected, and I think that that wouldn't necessarily happen. I did not think the roses, I want to mention that as well. Uh, secondly, um, I understood from the meeting at the Parks and Waterfront Committee that this area is going to be under the jurisdiction of the Department of Transportation and not the, uh, the Parks Department. And I don't quite understand why this shouldn't be run by the agency that knows how to run parks instead of the DOT. So that's just something I would mention. And obviously, uh, more make it make terms the whole plan to call it phase one. Absolutely. It should be phase two, phase three, whatever phases you envision could it could really transform that side of uh, lower Manhattan. And that's why I have something that I can add afterwards. Rosa, you're next. And and, and Bruce. Yes. Oh you're first. No, go ahead. Oh, okay. So, um, so thank you, everybody. Um, I would want to say in response before I forget. So, thank the mayor profusely because honestly, it's you know, city land, it's DOT land, um, and uh, they're also paying for it. So, thank sure. you, Mayor Adams. <laughs> um, number one, we're going to be a happy mob, not a, not angry. Um, and uh, number two, uh, it, the reason why it's DOT is because the Brooklyn Bridge and all the transportation infrastructure is on it. So the land is DOT owned because of the infrastructure that is above it. Um, let's see what else in nature is on. Oh, well, I, don't, I don't remember what in nature is on too. Uh, oh, police officers are all over there because you'll notice that that is one of the sad sections of town where all of the streets are closed. So that means that it's essentially a gated community. Um, gated by the NYPD. So there are literally police officers at every single one of those automated gate sections at all mm -hmm. corners of the area that is going to be opened up tomorrow. Uh, number four, we really hope you guys are all going to come because this is a huge win for our community. Um, I don't know if you remember in November of 2020, in the middle of the pandemic, we had our first community board meeting. And that was a meeting where we literally had like 150 skaters waiting on WebEx <laughs> um, for an hour and a half so they could speak for one minute. And that was when the idea for this entire project crystallized was at that community board meeting. Got unanimous support from all of the community board members inside the committee, and then unanimous support from the entire full board. Because we understood that what the value of public space is, is not just a place to skateboard or BMX or, you know, do whatever. Um, it was actually a space for all of us as people, as human beings, to like come together and talk to each other and meet each other in a safe outdoor space. And that's what public space should be. And that's why we so desperately need it in our communities. And we need more of it. So, yes, one acre down to go. Uh, <laughs> We're not going to give up until we. Oh, we're not giving up. Don't we're, worry. we're not giving up. And, um, and yeah, I just really hope that you all come. And I have to say that there are so many members of the community board that I see here who have been an integral part of the effort um, 
to get this done. So, and, and Liz is a huge, huge part of that That's really nice. as the chairman of our board. So I just want to say thank you. And if you aren't volunteering yet to make it happen, then you will be. <laughs> thank you. All right, Bruce, you're next. Yeah, while we're in parks and rec and giving gratitude, I have one sentence to convey my gratitude to Alice for reanimating Barnett Newman Triangle, which has been going on for 23 years. Yeah. Thank, Thank you for um, more to come on Barnett Newman <laughs> and for Rosa after we get through tomorrow. And I hope new board members, old board members, former board members, anybody in the public shows up to cheer the opening of this tomorrow at 11 o'clock. Um, we need to in part start to do in your committee fall to find an MOU between the agencies so we know who will take care of it and try and get something going up that line so we can establish no, I'm going to keep that on my agenda. We need something just official. Yep. That I, you see I, in writing I, that we not that that. If I would just do I want Ex well <laughs> exactly. Alice I just want to add one thing on parks. Um I, there was a conflict the evening of Waterfront Parks to with another group that met, and our new member, Jared uh, Shear, had was involved with the, the North Tribeca uh, Neighborhood Association, it's a your group, and there's a new park going up on the west side of the uh, advocated for called Rotary, and um, they met on the same night as Waterfront Parks. It's very exciting. You will come, I assume, to the community boards sooner than later to <laughs> talk a little bit about this, but it's a Resiliency Park. Um, it was reconceived. We've seen it earlier as a Holland Park, you know, tunnel park, but this has been reconceived somewhat. And it's a very exciting proposal that is happening on the west side. I want to make sure, you know, you gave a fantastic presentation and look forward to you bringing it to the board. It was really great. So, is that the circle, the roundabout? Yeah. Around? Yeah. So it's happening on the, yeah, we were seeing it, but very different than what we originally saw. Oh, really? Yeah. And then I just want to say one other thing just in terms of tomorrow, it's a little tricky, but everyone has got to come to, to the banks, of course, at 11, but at 10, the seaport is having a opening on the ship, the waiver tree, mm -hmm. to launch the, the, the boats going out, and it's also, you know, fleet week. So, uh, you know, our captain Woolwear would very much like all of us to go also, mm -hmm. which can be done because they're only 15 minutes apart. So, if you get there at 10 to the wave tree at the seaport and then walk over to the port. Could we do both, maybe? Anyway, I just want to make sure people are aware that that's also happening tomorrow at 10. Thank you. Exactly. Heads up. Yeah. So it'd be great if you can be out on the South Street Seaport by the waiver tree at 10. At 1030, you can stroll up. Um, if you're strolling somewhere around underneath where the Brooklyn Bridge is, you will see the balance of the eight acres and know that our long term goal in CB1 is to connect the very top all the way down to the Brooklyn Bridge Beach. All right. With that, let's move on to quality of life. You had a very exciting meeting. Uh, very exciting meeting. Good. And for new board members, we take all of our meetings so you can go to YouTube, Community Board One Quality of Life meeting, and see this very exciting. So there was only one item on the agenda, and it was 105 Washington Street, which will be opening in. Um, sorry, guys. It's opening in spring of 2024. It's a safe haven shelter. Uh, they came to us about four or five years ago before the pandemic when to, you know, to talk to us about the fact that they were uh, going to bring this shelter to our community. And unfortunately, because of the pandemic, it didn't happen as quickly as they thought it would. So now it's back on and they are working to get it open. So we have a lot of uh, interaction from community members. But let me just tell you a little bit about the shelter. So one exciting thing about this safe haven shelter is that it will allow people to bring their pets, unhoused people to bring their pets. And that is really important because a lot of people who are not, who are living, you know, on the streets, 
had pets and they don't want to go into shelter. One, because they're, they're afraid of some violence that might happen, but also they can't take their pets with them. So this would allow them to take their pets. Also, this shelter would have rooms for 15 rooms for couples. So there are a lot of people who are couples and if they go into traditional shelters, they are separated. They're segregated with men and, and women. So that's, you know, interesting. So let's see, there are 35 staff members that will be on three shifts per day. There'll be 84 people in the shelter. These will be the clients. They are going to have a rooftop uh, space so that people can, because early on, we did ask them a couple of years ago, one of the issues that we all have is people outside smoking, outside, outside restaurants, make smoking, talking, outside other, you know, facilities where they're smoking. So they are going to have a rooftop for their clients to smoke and to keep it quiet. One, one interesting and important thing is that one of the neighbors who lives directly next door came in support of the shelter. Uh, what else can I tell you? Let's see. Uh, there, hmm? You forgot two things. One, the original time that the city came to the shelter was before it was even on this floor. Because it was originally that location was going to be purchased and bit, turned into a women's shelter. That was, women's shelter. Shelter. That was decades ago, was decades. which the boards holistically supported. Um, then the city did not have the money to buy the building, and it went dormant until they came back. It's the old Buddhist temple building. Yes. If you walk on Washington right. Street between uh, Rector and it's Albany, mm -hmm. it is a beautiful building. Also, the other thing. Is that there are police? So everyone, a lot of people were upset about the possibility of the clients, uh, you know, being out of control and there being some sort of violent action or them hanging out on the streets. The two people who came and the the agency that's take the handling the shelter is called the Center for Urban Community Service. They had two people come, Abby and uh, Hadar Hadaria. I think is. And they were fabulous. I thought they were extremely well knowledgeable about the shelter, about the system, how they were going to run the shelter, who the people were who were going to be there. There's going to be a lot of support. There are going to be people for psych psychiatric treatment. There are going to be people. The, the, the goal is to place the client in permanent housing. And that a lot of the clients are going to come to them, recommended to them by other agencies or by outreach partners. Who have identified and talked to? Does it take a while to get anyone who is unhoused to go into shelter? So uh, they're going to come back again because I, they said there were a lot of questions left unanswered. There are four people that we did not get to, as far as I remember. I think there are four people. Maybe I don't know. I feel like I think every raised hand was no. There, we we what, when we said we were going to stop the meeting because we went on for quite a few hours. Oh, yeah. There are the four people that we said we'll take, yeah. and then there were four additional people who raised their hands after we said we take the last four oh, people. Oh, okay. Some of those people had already been right. had spoken already. So, and I, I ask, please, if, you, if, if the issue has been addressed already and answered, but you know, so some people wanted to rehash issues. So, anyway, we're going to have another meeting. Fortunately, you won't be here to help run it. Okay. But, <laughs> We'll, we'll, we'll organize another meeting with um, Abby and Hadara. So I question. Perfect. And then we should have NYPD reps there as well. Yeah, we wanted to have the police there. Which they my, just because I wanted to also ask, often when we talk about homeless in our community, we had shelters on Washington Street. We now have an immigrant hotel right down the street from what the sh where the shelter will be located. And we often get members of our community asking about, um, you know, how many times the police have been called. And truthfully, every time we've spoken to the police, I happen to be on the police council also. Every time we've asked the police about this issue, they have had relatively little problems with the shelters in our community and those clients that live in those shelters. Yeah, just two bits of additional information. I think um, I, I forgive me if you said this, but they said the, the their estimated date of opening was spring twenty four March, and then right. also at twenty one they told us they were going to ever preserve the facade of the building to the maximum extent mm -hmm. awesome. mm -hmm. Exactly. All right, hands up for who would like to speak. I'm going to go across 
Chris Cross, so it's going to be Richard and then Desi. Oh, and then, oh I was going to say, Miriam, did you want to add something? Uh, uh, let's go okay. Richard and then Desi and then Miriam and then more. It sounds like as, an, as ideal a shelter as we could possibly hope for in our, in our world. What are the opening questions that people are referring to? And what's the what do you expect to get for looking for the next meeting? Well, the people that, you know, as you heard, someone spoke in the public section who said that there were people who hadn't had that there were a lot of questions left unanswered and that there were people who hadn't had the opportunity to ask the questions. So we're going to give them the opportunity to ask the question. Were there questions that were able to be answered? I mean, I was like, and no, because I felt the two representatives were really, really informed and answered the questions. NYPD needs to come. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if, I, if I may, just one, one thing, uh, one theme, and I think this is a question that may not be able to be answered, was that there seemed to be a, a desire for people, like if people are on the street, that there would be some force that's watching them, whether it's security, it's like not on site, but in the public realm, um, they, whether it might be me or Battery Park City ambassadors or security from the from the site to be kind of monitoring them when they're not on site. And and while the, 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 the same payment for CUCS said, you know, on the block, we will have our security be vigilant. But once you kind of get out into not the neighborhood, we're not following them around because I think you know, it's, it needs to be said, it's not a crime to exist on the street. Exactly. And, 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 and exactly. uh, I think that's kind of like the, something that's never going to be satisfied or answered, but certainly it's something that is a, a I would definitely recommend. One of the other things we said was, you know, we have a lot of, unfortunately, we have a lot of homeless people in our community already, and they are not from, will not be affiliated with that shelter. And you can't, you know, some people are, Acting as though it was Elizabeth said something wonderful at the meeting, but people were acting as though everyone going to live in the shelter. By the way, people will be living in the shelter six to nine months so that they can get what they need to get into permanent housing. But the people, a lot of the people who attended the meeting and asked questions were acting as though every person who was going to be in the shelter was either a criminal or had mental illness. Right. Implication. Yes, and I just said, check your assumptions because I'm sorry, say again. And I just said at the very end, after 100 people, not 100, but literally 50 people went into, you know, exactly, you know, said what had the thing. I told them to check their assumptions because a very small percentage, statistically, I think Mimi brought the percentage up, a very small percentage of homeless people are actually mentally ill and or violent. So it wasn't that many people. Really. Okay, hold on, guys. Let's not turn this into a discussion. Richard, are you done with your thing? I'd just like to add one comment to the mentally ill question. There's been a lot of research about that. And actually what uh, has been found is that a very large percentage of people are actually homeless, not because of mental illness, but they become mentally ill because out in the street. Right. And uh, that's when they need help. And being mentally ill is not a problem. Okay, it's not. Desi? Well, I was going to say that I think it's really important that we come to some consensus here about supporting the shelter because I think, I mean, and the sentiment has been talked about already, but there is this alarm about homelessness and about the dangerousness of homeless people. And then there is a solution that's presented to help homeless people. And then there's an issue with where they're going to be and who's going to watch them. And they have mental illness. I mean, somebody quoted. 99.9% .9 of people who are homeless have mental health issues. That's not true. Right. And I think maybe even found a statistic that said it's about 10% of people who have mental illness. There are people who live in our community who are not homeless who have mental illness <laughs> who are out there harassing people. Right. So like, let's not get it twisted about who's gonna be here. We're talking about human beings, people who clearly may have some issues with mental health issues, with acting out because of the mental health, becoming mentally ill because of, I mean, homelessness is literally a, a, a cadre of problems that, that present themselves as a result of being homeless. And so I just think it's really important that if we're having conversations with people in our community, whether it's about a homeless shelter or about the homeless issue, that we ourselves are also informed about 
who homeless people are, because if we're continually allowing people in our community to act as though they're pariahs or they're these, you know, lepers who should be in somebody else's community, right. then we can't talk about actually addressing homelessness because then we're talking about shipping people to Roosevelt Island or someplace else and, and not actually caring for or addressing the issue of homelessness because it goes beyond just needing a home. And so I was just really kind of like disgusted with some of the, the community comments because this idea that <clears throat> still have to answer these questions, those questions ain't going to be answered. There will be people who will continually have an issue with the fact that there's only shelter in the community. So we can chase our tail and go around circles. Personal. And well, I'm not saying that we shouldn't be open to people voicing their concerns, but there will continually be questions and concerns that will never be addressed. Unless we say it ain't going to happen. It's, it's interesting, Desi, because we have had a shelter in our community for, for decades. Not one year, not two years, not five years from the pandemic. I'm talking decades. That long predates any of us, except for maybe Joe, on this board. Okay. And... Uh, you know, you don't have the neighbors running up and down from Tribeca and here talking about it. There have been domestic violence shelters that are unknown to board members exactly. that we know that have existed in our neighborhood that no one else knows because you can't. For safety reasons. Right, for safety general. reasons. Yeah. There have been all types of services. The most important thing that we could be doing and leading on is making sure that we try and help people who are living on our streets. That's what we ask for as a board. We want to help the people living on our streets find permanent homes to get off. If this shelter helps those people, instead of sleeping on the street, sleep inside and get to successful services, that is a win for humanity. Amen. And I think if we can get as often as possible to have police presence at our meetings to be able to address some of those, if we can have those conversations the prior to the meeting so that they're prepared to answer those questions, I think that would be helpful. We're going to try and schedule them to come at the same time. I mean, we did, but we couldn't. Yeah. yeah. In, in fact, we, we requested the DHS be there, NYPD. Just I want everyone to know that right now DH, DHS is at like 120% capacity yeah. with the, the migrant you know, uh, uh, emergency um, and DHS is so far beyond capacity that health and hospitals is running the herb site that's in our district in Indiana, Washington, because DHS doesn't have any more. We just right on the other yeah. end of the block. And, and, and they, they will be coming this coming month for quality of life. So this energy that the board is bringing tonight, please bring that same energy to quality of life. Well, yeah, I'd ask you all to attend if you could. That would exactly. be great. All right, Mary Ellen's next, and then Mort, and then I think we move on. I, I think sometimes the people that are attending the meeting from the public, or maybe maybe because we're in a tiny screen on Zoom and we've gotten used to looking at people in that way, you lose the perspective that most of us, many of us, also live in the area. We're also neighbors. I mean, community board members can be a fight if you work in an area too. Maybe you don't live there, but for the for the most part, they're we are your neighbors also. Right. None of us choose to be unsafe either. So obviously, <laughs> if, water from the spell. obviously if, we're, if we're going through, you know, the, the right. procedure to find out exactly what's happening, it's not just for your benefit because you're asking a question and you're calling in. It's for our own too. We have families here. We have children. We got pets and stuff. But there were some ridiculous questions that maybe didn't get answered because they didn't dignify an answer. Mm -hmm. Like there was one. Um, um, and this was by somebody who was running for public office, by the way. So you may want to make sure you vet your, your candidates, whoever you're voting for. Yeah. The person asked, are they going to be permitted to use drugs? Drugs are illegal. And this is like a, a, a facility that's been funded by the city wow. government. Of course, they're not going to be permitted to use drugs. I mean, so so maybe that question didn't get answered because it was actually, really, actually it was answered. A woman asked, because, and then a because at the official asked, the area were so professional that they even answered questions that didn't dignify it. You know, so okay. yeah. I mean, people have to realize we live in the community. Also, none of us want to be harmed either. 
but everybody has rights and asking that cops be outside to watch people that aren't doing really? anything or you know yeah. that's a violation of somebody's civil rights like we can't do that waste of and that's not no one's going to do that I, I i'd like to see a cop doing uh, oh and I, I want to no 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 more i'm not gonna say no 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 that's okay pat I agree, with, I agree with Desi, I agree with Mariana, as I often do, and almost always do. Uh, I listened in on the meeting as an attendee. Uh, I didn't participate, I just listened. Uh, I will say it wasn't that there were a lot of questions that were unanswered. A lot of the questions were redundant, the same questions, but over okay. and over and yeah. over again. And it, was, it wasn't 50 or 100 yeah, people. Yeah. It, it, was, it was a okay. couple of people. And two, and then I would say next uh, comment, and then you're done because Bruce wanted to speak, and we're at nine o'clock. Yeah. I would yeah. just say they had a very the day before the meeting. They had a very productive meeting with the PTA of PS 150. Uh, my son attends that school. My wife is vice president of the PTA. Uh, I just say it was a very productive meeting. There were concerns addressed initially in the past by the. Uh, by the people at PS 150, yes. the faculty, the principal. I think they've gone a great, uh, a large distance to alleviate those concerns. Yeah. I that's think they're going to right? That's right. They're going right. to work, work okay. with the community. I think it's going to be great. Moving on because they're coming back. I'm trying to just be supportive. And but I appreciate that, but we've got to move on. But bravo, Pat Moore. For your bravo, leadership. Pat, for taking on. And bravo. Super yeah, but you know, one, uh, one, one, no, 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 If you have anything new to add, you have the last new. word. No, <laughs> Bruce, Bruce. I want to, I want to add to what uh, Tammy said. We have had a. Uh, a, a, a drug abuse and homeless drop in center on Lafayette and Walker Street for at least 20 years. When Hazleton put in a, uh, a facility and now moved its entire operation in Manhattan to Lisbonard and Avenue of the Americas, there was a huge uproar. Both of these facilities are transparent have caused no problems. Half the people don't know it's there and everyone wants a solution to the homeless crisis as long as it's not in their neighborhood. So I, I think I think if you want to ask questions like we have done, for instance, with uh, Howard Hughes Corporation for 20 years, you can just keep asking questions and asking questions until hell freezes over if you don't want something. I think that given the sentiment of the board, and given the fact that the city is so overwhelmed with homeless and immigrant questions that we should basically move on to a resolution and support. I know we can't do it tonight because we're not in committee, but why, Bruce, why hammer this out further? Let me interrupt you and say we already have. So there we go. We are, that, that was a perfect ending. You summarized it lovely. Um, Lucian gave Ann Street updates in his report, I believe. Yeah, he did. Now, yeah. Mr. Connell is going to go next because you want to, you can wish me a belated happy Patrick. birthday and an early one for Patrick. Okay. So let's get Patrick. So, Hello, personal privilege. She's not the line, guys. Sorry. There you go. Yeah, yeah, um, first up, see your site file. Sorry. All right, all right. I ate all the cake. Uh, all right. Uh, World Trade Center Site Five Resolution. Everybody, so busy month in, in land use is promised. Um, we have two resolutions and a report. Slide through them. Uh, World Trade Center Site Five. Uh, I don't expect this to be controversial. But let me walk everybody through it. Um, CB1 and, and others have been advocating um, and working hard on increasing the amount of affordability at World Trade Center Site 5 uh, for many years. And that includes legitimate and feasible plans for 100% affordability at 5WTC, which, as everybody knows, is the site of the old uh, Deutsche Bank building at 130 Liberty Street that burned down in 2007. Um, we've had prior resolutions and reports and updates, and everyone should be very familiar um, with this project. 
the land is currently owned by the Port Authority of New York, New Jersey. I think that's important to understand because this is state owned land. Um, the building at the site, however, is to be developed uh, by a joint venture, including Silverstein Properties and Brookfield Properties, private developers. Um, as originally proposed, you guys will remember this, the project would have been 25% affordable. So out of the 1,200 uh, apartments to be built in the 80 story building, about uh, 300 of those would have been affordable with um, eligibility based on bands of AMI um, area median income, which uh, would average about 50% of AMI. Uh, there's also a community space that's promised in the building along with some other features. Um, that was the original project plan, but now the developers um, uh, and three state agencies that are overseeing the project, the LMDC, Lower Manhattan Development Corporation, um, the state controlled Empire State Development, ESD, um, and the Port Authority are ready to move forward with the project. Uh, and they are seeking to approve at each of their board levels a 99 year lease in favor of the developers to execute on the project. Um, most of you may know um, LMDC met uh, gosh, was it earlier this week or last week um, to approve that. Tammy spoke, um, gave comments that are consistent with a resolution where our committee voted on, um, and I thought it was quite eloquent, by the way. Um, but unfortunately, the LMDC voted to approve it, um, and I think we heard that ESD is going to take it uh, shortly as well. With the Port Authority tomorrow. With the Port Authority tomorrow. I don't think ESD already has. Uh, so all of this would have uh, 5WTC running this primarily a market rate residential building. Um, so now they're prepared to complete the project with increased affordability at 30% versus 25%. So that's 300. Uh, 60 versus 300 of the 1200 units would be affordable with eligibility bands of AMI um, equal to 85% average AMI up from 50%. But still, this is a 70% market rate building on state owned land, which is a fact that you know, we've repeated and I don't think of anybody on this community board. Uh, the agencies and developers said that they will consider adding more affordability if, if, uh, sources of additional subsidies can be identified within one year by April 2024. Um, as our committee set out the resolution, um, the, there's nothing in that promise that requires the developers or those state agencies to go and actively look for that additional subsidy. Uh, and that's really one of the biggest problems. So what they're effectively doing is punting that responsibility to look for the additional subsidies over the community and to the advocates. Um, so our resolution does uh, several things. First, um, it asks for the boards of LMDC, ESD, and Port Authority to pause on approving uh, the project until they've received actual responses as opposed to um, no response to their claim inquiries of additional um, subsidies. Um, and that includes, by the way, a response specifically from the New York City Comptroller who uh, controls the BPCA Joint Settlement Fund, which, um, without going into the details of it, is a fund that is um, specifically keyed toward affordable housing. Right. So ESD, uh, the agencies, the developer said that they asked about it, but they got no response. So that was the end of it. Um, so until they actually chase that down, they shouldn't be approving this project. That's point one in our resolution. Point two. Um, asks that the agencies um, and the developers truly try to partner with the community to try to find additional sources of subsidies um, to, to help increase affordability. And thirdly, it asks that the agencies and the, and the developers provide full access to uh, their financial modeling and the data and the assumptions um, that support the developers and the agencies' claims that they need certain levels, certain amounts of subsidies to increase the levels of affordability because <clears throat> there's at least one other feasibility report out there um, by uh, the coalition of 100% 5 WTC coalition um, that says otherwise. So that's what the resolution asks for. I think it's very self-explanatory, um, but if folks have questions, happy to answer. Yes, Mark. Just a couple of language things. Uh, therefore, be resolved. So the first one, CB1 demands. That's good. But then the second one. CB1 is exactly the request. You know, why, is, why not just say also demand or strongly request? And the third one, you know, further 
request or further demands. I, I, honestly, it's, it's minor diplomacy, and it doesn't What's matter that? to me. It's demand or request. So, I'm making a well, an amendment to change the language. A friendly amendment. Those are things. I'm the all right with that. Yeah, that's fine. All right, that reflects the sense of the committee. No problem. Yeah. So that will respectfully request to change the demands. With that, anybody else? Uh, Mary Ellen has her hand up, and I and see no questions that. online. Patrick mentioned if I think it's important to emphasize that everybody understands that the additional the addition of five percent removed the deepest affordability. So it's like a game of three card money. They didn't really give us anything else. Um, that's the thing. Also, the um, by voting at the LMDC and then subsequent to that at ESD and expectedly on Thursday at Port Authority, they basically doubled the amount of money for which we need to look. So when they say we're giving the community a year to find the funds, they've just doubled the amount of funds that we need to find by voting to change, to modify the project plan, because that locks in the Silverstein Brookfield design specs that are more costly than perhaps um, some of the other things that were in the feasibility study or that some of the architect may have imagined. Thank you for that clarity. Does anybody else have any questions? Seeing Tam no hands. Uh, Sorry, Tammy, I thought I raised mine. Yep, Zelter, you're the last hand up. Patrick, can you just quickly clarify what we're seeking with the second uh, objective? partnership with the community? I mean, I understand that language, but specifically, what are we seeking there? Well, I think we're, we're now demanding, uh, rather than <laughs> <the question. laughs> we are, we're, we're, no, uh, and we're asking that um, agencies and the developers, uh, rather than um, say to the community, well, you go find it. Uh, we're effectively saying, hey, uh, let's find it together. Because um, you're probably more better positioned to, to help us um, figure this out, and you can't you can't shift that burden over to the community. You've got to be a part of that conversation. And so I think that's that's really what we're asking them to do is to not advocate on the responsibility to be a part of actively seeking that additional funding. Does that make sense? Yep. Thank you. Well, Bob. Yeah, I've heard the song before, and yeah. where. Um, we advocate for social goodness and the developers use the community to then extract public dollars for the project without transparency. How much money are we talking per unit to, to make it affordable? $500,000 a unit, $600,000 a unit. What are they going to extract as a price from, look, you could build a lot cheaper in Queens than you can at the World Trade Center. What are they going to extract from us and us saying we want to partner with you? And then they're going to extract the price tax dollars that that could be absurd and could build three times as many more units someplace else, which I'm not advocating for. I thought our original demand was build it. You got your deal and give us 40 percent, 50 percent affordable housing. And that's your deal. Not now going back. So I may abstain on this, um, not now going back and letting everybody pick the pockets of the taxpayers again. And, you know, I think we have to, with capital projects, be aware of what the ramifications are when a community advocates. And I think we have to be aware of all capital projects and what we advocate for, because money runs out. They run out. They don't give it to the schools. They don't give it to the poor folks. You know, it's a great project, but but what are they asking? What is the unit, the per unit cost to make a, one of the affordable? I think I think, I think the last the last exactly. paragraph addresses exactly what, what, what did you say to your question. What, yeah, the fundamental disagreement with whether that's the proper usage. I'm not disagreeing. Yeah, yeah. But how much? There's no dollar out. amount. We don't know. We don't know, and they haven't told us. Yeah, and they're and not going to tell us. Well. Over a million per, based on the numbers that they have shown at the last That's presentation, right. which shows a million an apartment. The increase, the increase in the number of units. Rosa, how much? How much did you say? Per apartment. Richard, you're next. 
Yeah, so Rosa Rosa has got it about right. Uh, the cost, the subsidy requirement for apartment varies, of course, based upon the AMI assumptions that are in there. So the model is rather complex, which is why we want to we want to see the model. But for rule of thumb, a million dollars an apartment is basically what they're what they're claiming. Yeah. Uh, is that a, we don't know if that's really accurate or not because we don't have access to the model, and that's what one of the things that we're demanding here in this resolution. But I would also say uh, to you, Bob, that there, the fact of the matter is that affordable housing requires public dollars. That is simply a reality. It doesn't happen without public dollars. And what we're saying here is that on public land, this is where it right. can and should happen because the land, in fact, is the thing that is the most Agreed. costly, especially here in lower Manhattan. And, and especially the after one, they gave away the rest of the land. Especially yeah. since the billions of dollars that came in from 9-11 uh, LMDC funding never went to affordable housing, which is one of the key things we wanted to have. And if I may, apply. I would also point out, sir, I would also point out, it's pointed out in the resolution that billions of dollars of taxpayer funds have been pissed away at that site mm -hmm. okay. to, to now sacrifice affordable housing because you couldn't manage the money otherwise. Right. It's a crying shame. Mm -hmm. Well. Well, and that's what I'm saying. All capital. Mark, Mark goes next, and then I'm going to, before you go, I'm going to say one thing. The city has come up and told us many, many times that our schools are not diverse, and we don't have diversity in our schools. Therefore, all of in District 2, you know, the school education councils, all of our schools needed to be citywide for high schools or borough wide because we don't have diversity. Whereas, if you look at Millennium High School as a typical example, built to support the growing populations in Lower Manhattan, was forced to go large. But the Brooklyn Millennium can stay worldwide because they push affordable housing out of the areas. So you can't say, wow, your schools aren't diverse. We have to change how your schools work if you're not willing to put affordable housing in to try and, I mean, it's just, it, it's like everybody running around in a carousel, just just going around and around and around. This is how we can solve this. We had a thousand units of affordable housing would certainly make a dent in where we are in this community because we've lost six thousand units of affordable housing in the last twenty some odd years. I went to agree with that analysis, Tammy. I have I have a question. Well, we don't imagine. I have a question about the figure of a million dollars per apartment. Is that for nine hundred? Whatever it is, is that over a period of time? Is that like an initial outlay? What, That's what, what they get. I, that they get. Bob, let Richard answer because he was in yeah. the meeting. It, it's an initial. It's an initial subsidy that covers the uh, the full life. Uh, Full guarantee of affordability for the life of the life of the project. So, but it's a one-time subsidy. But if, if it's a, if a one-time over you know, the life of the apartment, no, it's up front. I know, but even if it's up front, but if you're amortizing over the whole life of the apartment, then it's nothing. No, but, but after someone like so, okay, so that's how. After after more has gone, Alice called. The Wait, they have to put up right up front. Emmy, can I go next? The because funding? you may not. More is done because the question has been called and seconded. So we have to move to a vote procedurally. I'm sorry, Nikki. But it got, before you got recognized, it got called and seconded. All right. So we're going to, it's a complex resolution, but we're going to go by affirmation again. All right. So assuming everybody's a yes, are there any no's? You know, everybody on camera. There are camera, Laura. Okay. All right. Seeing no nos, hearing no nos, are there any abstentions? Say your name, sir, for the record. Bob Townley. Abstain. From Mudgeon. Yeah. Are there any other abstentions? You must say a little bit of abstains. Grayson abstains. Thompson abstains. Rossi abstains. 
And cheers. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay. Got some good new board See, members here. Yeah. Hey, listen, they got a point. Of they have a lot to catch up on. All right. Seeing so you no know, any sentences online. <laughs> Hearing none. Are there any recusals? Hearing none. Motion passes. Okay, Happy second, birthday, Patrick. Thanks. Well, a couple more things. So, second item is a BSA uh, application for 346 Broadway. Um, this is effectively it's an application renewal. It's effectively a 10 year permit on a parking garage um, at the base in 346 Broadway, uh, which is a uh, now a private condominium building. Uh, the space is to be off the condo residence, but if they're not already used up, the operator will offer them to, you know, cars on the outside, cars on the streets. Um, you'll see in the, the resolution that city one didn't take a resolution on uh, a, a position on this application the last time that it was up in 2013. But keep in mind that was uh, about the time the property was changing over from uh, in a disposition of city owned property at the end of Bloomberg administration uh, to, uh, to to private um, developers that was block of properties around the civic center as, you, as many of the community board members may remember. Um, interestingly, in 2017, the BSA issued a letter of substantial compliance, which reduced the number of spaces in the garage from 110 to 33, uh, which allowed the sponsor to use more of the cellar space for other amenities of the condo building. Um, the committee found that kind of annoying uh, that we weren't consulted uh, by the BSA about it, but in the end, the committee really had no problem with this application and renewing equipment. Are there any questions? All of right. Mark? There were two opposed. What was the reason uh what were they arguing again it's split vote kind of so i don't remember does anyone here who voted against it yeah. <laughs> all right yeah i did yeah. i mark on it am i looking at the wrong one yes yeah sorry yeah, no sorry 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 I, I abstained on it because of the reason the passage just alluded to which was had i been aware of the fact that 133 parking spaces were then reduced to 33 with the use of that basement space for the private gym i would never have voted for it originally so that was why i abstained and with that i'm going to call the question going by information are there any notes are there any abstentions? Blank abstains. Race and abstains. Council abstains. Roth abstains. Thank you, brother. Uh, Chair stepped out. Are there any abstentions online? Okay, hearing none. Thank you, Patrick. Thanks. All right, and happy birthday. Thank you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Okay. Um, all right. For. Jeff, if you can manage Battery Park City in three minutes, I would be highly appreciative. Then we're going to go to Betty K. Last is Alice Blank, which will be roll call. And I'm just going to do two reminders for everybody. I would have loved to have been home in eight minutes by leaving here in eight minutes. But that means that you must all read the resolutions before you come. If you read the resolution and you don't understand something, please feel free to contact the chair of that committee before you get here, but read the resolutions. And then the one last thing that I will remind everybody to say before Jeff goes, only because you're all still somewhat awake. If you need to reach Lucy in the next month, you must email man01. We have had a technological glitch from the city and the office. Not Lucy's fault. Not Lucy's fault. And we have removed her emails. <laughs> They, she had three three email addresses two have gone boom they wow. reinstated another one which then on friday disappeared so we have no faith right now that any of them will be reinvented and how long they were last we do know that manal yeah. is the official one so if you need to reach the office please use manal one okay jeff you're on i'll be very quick um uh we have no resolutions uh that's how we'll Items on the agenda. The first is that Brookfield came and presented uh, their plans for activation of the upper flag. So for what they call port side, it's very similar to what's been going on last year and perhaps the year before. It's basically an outdoor bar type seating area, but you don't have to buy anything to use. The table can sit there and drink your drinks and move. Um, uh, the uh, Brookfield rep 
gave us as she did last year her personal cell phone number. So if there are any issues in terms of noise, we know who to call and uh, complain. There weren't any uh, significant issues last year. <laughs> Secondly, we have a presentation by a resident of Battery Park City uh, for the retention at Battery Park City Authority's expense of an expert in environmental engineering to advise the community on how to understand the environmental impact statements and other documents relating uh, to the resiliency plans in Battery Park City. Although with some um, uh, general um, uh, reception to the idea that the community it would be great if the community board had additional expertise on staff or if the borough president had engineering expertise on staff that would assist us in some of these technical projects, that would be a good idea. But that the prospect of hiring um, at $100,000 or thereabouts an additional engineer to advise on projects where we have experts that are actually designing the projects coming to the meetings and answering our questions. Uh, there were concerns that that was not uh, a wise use of taxpayer funds by uh, expert engineers. The committee didn't take a position one way or the other on the, uh, on the proposal that you won't presume to consider it uh, at subsequent meetings. Um, the other reports were just reports from or the other items were just reports from the authority or representatives of the authority of going on in Battery Park City. Um, a copy of the report is available uh, in the materials that were made available uh, for this meeting. I agree with you all. That's it. Perfect. Jeff, love that. Thank you very much. And our condolences to Justine. All right. Betty K, you have two resolutions. Resolution. And then Alice is, is the West Side Task Force, and that will be our last for the night. Betty, take it away. Yes, yeah, the next slide. Let's go with the stop sign request. It's very good. And this is the bus stop for the laboratory of services doing business as New York Iconic Cruises. It's for the next, you can see a picture of this. It's only one bus. Uh, it is in the this started in 2019 is a minority owned business. The loop that we're doing is Midtown and Lower Manhattan. So they're really only requesting one stop in our distance. And that's what we're talking about. And here is where it is. It's just across the street from 100 Broadway. Uh, in south of it is North Trinity Church. The other bus stops, one at MTA and another one at one bus stop, are both south of the church in case you're thinking of those. They are down by Rector Place. And it's on a bus stop, and they're not going to have any parking or anything. This is straightforward. Therefore, be it resolved uh, that we actually supported Aurora Tourism Services. And they only make four daily stops. It is Monday through Sunday. They do pickups and drop offs. Obviously, at 8 a.m., they're only dropping off because there's nobody to pick up. And likewise, at uh, the end of the day, they do pickups and drop offs. But the end of the day, people have to go find their way to wherever they want to go. And there was some concern about sidewalk crowding. The DOT has checked out the site and said that no, it's really adequate for the flow of people. And the buses do not cross backups on Broadway, is what we're in for concern. So you spoke to the DOT about that. And next, to get further resolved, uh, we also asked the Department of Transportation to consider assigning. Bridging services, a bus stop on Trinity Place. There were many members who felt it was really important to ask them to put it on another street, not on Broadway, but give the same basic location, which put it on Trinity Place. Okay, does anybody have? Okay, awesome. That was called question and second. Yeah, exactly. That's okay. So going by uh, affirmation, no, we didn't want to take it together or no, no, that's not. I mean, it's funny, but I mean, don't we have it's, time? And you gotta go to the committee. No, I am from the committee. Every, no, I am from the committee. The question has been called, oh, and it's God. second. It's not right. It is it's not right. No, it's it's not, not right. right. No, no, that's not right. right. Point of information. Point of information. If, if, if the Mark, you are recognized. Point. Thank you. Thank you. So we're not interrupting and speaking out, but yes, please. So I know it's late and everyone wants to go home, 
But if a board member, a board member wants to speak and he has his hand up, it shouldn't be rushed or tricked into uh, a quick uh, um, uh, call to question or anything like that. He should be able to speak. Um, it's just it's, it's just not it's just not it's, it's fairness. It's just not fair. Said her and 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 procedurally as well. You know, we go with Robert Cruz and water, and you know we. Every then every vote will come up and sneak in a phone question, phone question, phone question, and we'll be out of here in an hour. So okay. you should be able to speak. That's it. Thank yeah. you, Mark. Just Collins. And people should go to committees and discuss it at the committee. We, we can't come to the committee. Committee. every committee. I'm talking about right. We should, should look at the chair. I guarantee you will be hot to meet with your readers. Why do we have a full board meeting? Let's just vote. All right. Why do we have a full board meeting? It's late and we haven't had our milk yet, so let's yeah. go. Yeah. 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 So you need to take no, take whatever. it down a level. Whatever. Whatever. <laughs> whatever. 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 Eric, you are on the I'm committee. On the committee. You voted, correct? Right. <laughs> but before the board votes, I'd like to make a comment. No way. I, I actually I have, have a question. question here. No. Just just the board, yeah. Do not speak out of turn. Give me a second to take a breath and stop arguing like children please no we can't get out of here with decorum unless we all respect each other uh, and by the way in order like mark so patiently waited after i shut him down you have to be recognized by the chair or whoever is running the meeting so we're going to start this again betty are you done with that question? are there any questions Eric, recognized. Thank you. Um, I, I was on the committee. I voted against this resolution. I, I support the, the small business. The, the problem is there's already a lot of congestion on Broadway. Adding another bus stop on Broadway where there's only one lane of traffic except for the bus lane and they're making stops. Because we have that bike lane with that hard Jersey barrier, it's congested on, on, mm -hmm. on Broadway. So. I would prefer that the bus stop be approved for Trinity Place as a requirement, not just asking the DOT to, to consider it. Because when, when, the, when the business owner came to us, he said he offered two other spots, but this is the one that the DOT assigned them. So, so they're not going to change their mind, the DOT. But I just want to bring up to you the concern that, that there's a lot of congestion, traffic congestion on Broadway, and this will just add to it. Can I, can Thank I you. It is an existing bus stop. It is not a new bus stop. Mm -hmm. That wasn't used, but now, now we'll be uh, used. Uh, yeah. uh, commented, yeah. answered, moved on to answer. You're done. Mort, do you have a question? Yes, I do, because uh, we talked about the traffic issue at the S-150. If this bus is going to go down, Broadway and loop up on Trinity Place is going to go right past PS 150. No, it doesn't. It does not. It doesn't. Go, no, no, but if it's going to go on Trinity Place, it's got to go on Trinity Place. It's, it's, it's on Broad. It's on Broad. On but, if, but you're saying you're saying to transfer it to Trinity Place in the resolution. So if it's going to go up Trinity Place, it's going to go up past PS150. There are already enough buses that are going past PS150. That's one problem. You can vote against it. It was a suggestion. You don't have to agree with it. You can absolutely vote against it. No problem. Okay. And with that, seeing no other hands in the room. Yes. Colin, did you want to make a motion? I'm good, actually. Thanks. <laughs> Yeah, and it's been seconded. If you do not want to support it, as I've said before, that is your right. All right. So going by affirmation, do I hear any no's? Last name and then vote. No. Amarito, no. Mitzley, no. Some brothers. Myrna, no. You yell, we're going to vote again. Are there any other no's in the room? I can all do this. Peace and peace. no. Mitzley. Learner, you are there any no's online? Hearing none, are there any abstentions? Zelter abstain. Perfect. Airman abstains. Was that Airman? Airman. Yes, yes, okay. Thompson abstains. Thompson abstains. Rossi abstains. Rossi abstains. Sure abstains. Vera abstains. Vera Sung abstains. Curtis abstains. Curtis abstains. 
Lordy B. Oh, man. There's a pet. Okay. Are there any key results? Okay. Uh, I know you're a crazy. Okay. With no recusals, motion passes. Good. Thank you very much. New business. New business. This is our last. And Betty, thank you. Spicy fun with the new members. Oh, Newark Airport. Oh, my goodness. Great. Yeah. We also have new old businesses. Yeah, yeah. the EPC. Oh, we'll clear it on the EPC one. Otherwise, I'm going to throw them down. Go ahead, Betty. Is there a request to uh, extend the past train where it now ends uh, at Newark and Station all the way to the airport, Newark and Temple Airport? So, uh, everything was in place that would be done. It was stopped in a March meeting of the Port Authority to lack of funds and the tunnels and the bridges and other things going on with COVID. Uh, and it was a request by the Downtown Alliance that we helped to break down the airport. In fact, the community board, you can see a yellow where it is here, I'm going to be extending it 2.4 miles from New York Penn Station to the Northeast Port at Report Station. That would be a 36 minute. One single ride, the building single seats from the World Trade Center in New York Airport. In 2019, it was projected to exceed the number of federal flights and all the number of people who would be using it. Okay. Do I see any hands in the room? I want to, yeah, the, the community board has stood behind a one seat ride for at least over a decade. Bob. Call the question. Second. Fantastic. Going by uh, affirmation, do I hear any no's? Do I hear any no's online? No. Do I hear any abstentions? Thompson, thanks. I'll see the Okay. Three abstentions. No abstentions online. Do I see, hear any recusals? Hearing none, motion passes. Thank you so much. Now, this is our last resolution. I am begging you that you would have read this resolution. There's a lot of work that went into this one. Um, uh oh, is this bad a terms? No, 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 no. Keep going, Betty. We're gonna cut there. Yeah, there we go. West Side Task Force. Okay. This has been widely discussed. I'm hoping that you all read the very detailed yeah. list. Yeah, oh, it's, it's it's um coming out of environmental protection. This is uh, with as you all recall, the we had a public hearing with our congressman uh, Goldman to support the idea of forming a West Side Resiliency Task Force to look specifically at the West Side and resiliency matters holistically, comprehensively. And that's what this is about. I assume you've read it. If you have any Great. questions, feel free to ask them. Otherwise, I think we will on and vote on it. Any questions? Okay. Uh, uh, this, yeah. And I assume the reason you want to be involved and we want to be involved in this is because some of the plans that have been floated, lack of a better word, uh, are, not, are not useful uh, solutions. Well, yeah, I mean, but that's the reason we're doing this. The reason we're doing this is that the city of New York and the state cannot show any plans for the entire west side of the cap. And they have left this to the federal government. And this, those of you who have followed this, Right. Seen the United States Army Corps plans, which are not that popular with this wall running through the right. middle of Hudson River Park and such. And so we're asking that there's a study that looks very carefully at the city, state, and federal level at all possible alternatives. Yeah. Okay. So that is why we're asking. Good idea. Thank you for your work on this. Okay. I see yes. no other hands in the room. I see no hands online. What's on blind? Um, fantastic. So this will be a roll call. At the end of roll call, we will adjourn the meeting, and I will say thank you so much for your time and your patience and your uh, attention. This has been a great learning experience for our fantastic morning <laughs> members. Go to Komodo. Yeah. Room together. Phone the room together first. Yeah. That's going to take together. Yeah. Go for it, both on ever sir. No. Blank. Yes. Uh, Cameron. Cameron, yes. Bill. Yes. Chang. Captain. William. Holman. Foreman. 
It's hard to hear Colin on the phone. Thank you. Uh, okay. Learner. Yes. Learner, yes. Lewinson. Lewinson, yes. Lynn. Lion. Lion, yes. Mahoney, yes. McHugh. Meltzer. Meltzer, yes. Binsley. Minsley, yes. Moore. Moore, yes. Anaya. Good idea. She was on special. She's there. Yeah, she's. Ushma? Yes, unmute, please. We need to hear you. Sorry, I can't hear. Ushma, yes. Thank you. Robinson. Robinson, yes. How's that, girl? Sheer. Star. Star, yes. Tongue, Jimmy. Here is Tongue. Here, yes. Thompson. Thompson of Snake. Galloway. Yes. You. Yes. Zelter. Zelter, yes. Go back to Grayson, please. Grayson. Grayson, yes. That was your passes. Motion passes. Meeting is adjourned. Nine three. Thank you, everybody. Need to report. Bye, everyone.